1580 KGAL. American Legion Baseball is on the air. The following sports broadcast is an exclusive presentation of 1580 KGAL and is brought to you by Lynn Benton Tractor, La Roca Mexican Restaurant, Albany Grocery Outlet, McDonald's, Lassen RV, Extapa Family Mexican Restaurant, Mark Thomas Motors, Burgerville, Now Builders, Albany's Figaro's Pizza, and by Economy Supply Building Center. Now, get ready for American Legion Baseball. With all the action, here are Radio Ray and a cast of thousands. Live on 1580 KGAL. Memorial Baseball Invitational Tournament. I'm Radio Ray, that's Scott Landgren. We are underway already. Mid Valley is uh, on the field here tonight. They will be the home team this game. I thought Eugene was the home team tonight. Mid Valley will be the home team. Eugene, the Eugene Challengers are the opponent tonight as part of this uh, tournament. And uh, let me uh, change here. David, uh, David Bellamy has uh, bounced out to start uh, the game. So David Bellamy grounds out for the first out of the game and here's Eric Long as we join you already in uh, progress this evening. There's a high fly ball to center field. It's Jacob Buley who will call off the right fielder Trent for Jacob Caston. Jacob Caston will take it for the out oh, quickly. Oh, oh, <laughs> very, very quickly. Like many things, these things do not have a definite starting time. It's not like a TV game where they say it's got to start at this time and that's it. It was supposed to start at 7.30 this evening. The game prior went a little bit long. So they were warming up, and they were still on the field not that many minutes ago, but all of a sudden they just cleared out. It looked like maybe they would start at 8, but they even started before 8 o'clock, and there is a strike thrown to Joe Schindler on the mound for the Mid-Valley Rockets as Crew Clark. So instead of having enough time to explain what we're doing here and why, we'll do that in the course of the ball game uh, tonight. But it'll give us something to talk about. That, that seems to happen to us a lot, though. In the we're used to it. That's Scott Landgren over there. I'm Radio Ray. These are the Mid-Valley Rockets and the Eugene Challengers. And the pitch is called on the outside corner for a strike. One ball, two strikes to Joe Schindler. The number three hitter in the order for the Eugene Challengers, who we just saw finish off the Portland Athletes in motion. There's a pitch low. Count will be even a two and two. It's a, a strange lineup for the tournament in that each team does play a doubleheader. Uh, in fact, Eugene played two games yesterday, and they played two games today. They play a couple of doubleheaders in the course of the, uh, the tournament. So apparently there are some games that are not critical to the outcome of the tournament. They have a red section, they have a blue section. But because teams are playing extra games and doubleheaders, apparently some games have already been predetermined. If I am correct, that would not be a part of the standing and the determination of who will play for first through fourth tomorrow. This game is one of those because it not really, does not really matter. Pitch is lying foul down the right field line as the shadows begin to encumber the field here at North Eugene High School. Speed Johnson Stadium, Gary Selby Field. Pitch will be ball four, so Joe Schindler after two quick outs for Clue Clark will reach. Well, become the first base runner of our game. They play a number of games in a day. They may have even played five games uh, today. Wow. So they are seven inning games as a result. These are not nine. Through our summer, the games will be nine innings for Legion Baseball. But occasional tournaments, such as the Fourth of July tournament in Corvallis, the annual Star Spangled Tournament, that will be a seven inning. Those will be seven inning contests, and so is this one tonight. Runner leads from first, two outs, top of the first inning as Crew Clark throws in the dirt. It'll bounce away and off the, the pads of catcher Austin Smith and on his way down to second is Joe Schindler. And it will be a wild pitch from Clue Clark. A lineup that is heavily laden with players from West Albany High School. If you listen to our high school broadcasts in the spring, 
You will think they were broadcasting <laughs> West Albany. Baseball. Pretty much. There's only two uh, Lebanon players on the team. Both of the Repay brothers. And let me see here. One from Sweet Home, three from East Lynn, and one from South. That's it. Pitch will just miss low, or perhaps outside as well. Ball two. Two balls, no strike to Dalton. Did we say uh, Picano? Pachano. Pachano. I had it as a D as the last letter. <laughs> Pachano. Pitch is outside, ball three, three and oh. So, Crew Clark, who was very sharp in retiring David Bellamy on an innocent ground ball, on an innocent fly ball from Eric Long, then walked Joe Schindler, and now is behind Dalton Pachano, three and oh, as he looks for a sign from Austin Smith. And throws 3-0 right down the heart of the plate, strike one. Jordan Thomason, spelled with an H-T-H-O-M-I-S-O-N, would be on deck. Thompson. Thompson, yeah. It, it's Thompson, Thompson right? <laughs> <laughs> that's ball four throw. That's a, is it a, you know, I oh, that's a, oh, it's a P. Yeah, it's Thompson. There is no loop on the P. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's no there, penmanship award here. Is that there, right? there is not a loop on the P. The young man will have to change his name. It looks like an I. <laughs> you see, what I did is I looked at the numbers, and then I just looked at the, uh, All in the, the roster, roster that we well, got. So I well, that's cheating. Well, I know. So runners at first and second, as suddenly the control is lost from Crew Clark's right arm here, and he walks two batters in succession, Joe Schindler, Dalton Pachano, and Jordan Thompson. Is the hitter and waiting for the first pitch from Clue, and this one will be high ball one. <laughs> oh, a little, little wind. Here comes the wind. Into the studio here. One ball, no strike. To Jordan. Jordan, right handed hitter, as the shadows really begin to lengthen here at the field. Nice summer afternoon. Ball two is thrown. Austin Smith, the catcher for the Rockets. Jackson Soto at first. Andrew Kettleson at second. Sawyer Reed at short. And to keep it from being a West Albany infield, Jake Repay is at third. Pitches low and way outside ball three. And Crew is not only missing, but he's not missing close. And he's missing outside, inside, high, low. In the outfield, Jacob Buley in left, Jacob Caston in center, and Trent Webb is the right fielder for the Mid Valley Rockets. Three and oh, and inside. I say that looked Going inside. Forward. It did. I didn't see the uh, batter hasten to first, nor a call immediately for the home plate umpire, but it was, it was inside. I thought perhaps I was about to say there's a merciful strike. So the bases are loaded on walks, and the challengers, who won a couple of games yesterday, to push their record to seven and four, and they won a game just a little while ago against Portland AIM, AIM Athletes in Motion. That seems redundant somehow, Athletes in Motion. I mean, there aren't too many games where you just maybe bowling a little more. <laughs> you know? I suppose that's true. <laughs> but most of the sports are going to have Athletes in Motion. But Eugene uh, finished them off in a game just prior to this one, and now they have the bases loaded in the top of the first inning, and inside, ball one. My! Where has the control gone? That's a good question, Ray. Right-handed hitter Tommy Alstrom looks at a strike, just taking all the way, and that one broke cleanly down at the pipe. Well, why not? Make him throw you a strike. He's been erratic so far. Tommy Alstrom, I assume I have pronounced the name correctly. He did go around strike two. They didn't yell at you at the other end of the booth. No, I, I think you're. I think you're right. <laughs> I haven't heard the media correction, so <laughs> I must have read that one correctly. Tommy Alstrom, you can see the letters clearly there. Yeah, that was a good one. A H L Strom. One two. Swung on and grounded to the third baseman. Off the third baseman, Jake Repay's glove. It's going to be an, an infield single. One run scores. Two runs come home. Throw down to third, and the runner there is safe at third. Runners at the corner. And I will try to figure out how two runs scored on that, Scott. The ball went off the glove of Jake Repay. He had to go long way to his left towards short, so it's an infield base hit. 
tough play, but suddenly a two-run score, and runner, even the runner from second came Right. Home. Well, what happened was, like you said, it went off his glove, and then Sawyer Reed was moving to his right to try to, in case Rappay could not get it, so he was trying to try to be there, and the ball went off his glove, went out towards second base where nobody was, and third base coach did not hesitate to send him all the way. So an infield single, yet two-run score, it's 2 nothing, and runners now at the corners, first and third, and the challengers take a quick 2 nothing lead here in the first inning. This one is a wild pitch that is going to bounce beyond the catcher. Smith flips home, but not in time. Didn't go as far as it seemed like it might. If it would go to the backstop here, and the bases were loaded, everybody could score. It's a long way to the backstop. Yes, it is. You would truly be an athlete in motion if you were the catcher. <laughs> trying to get a ball that went to the backstop here, but it didn't go that far. It went just beyond the circle, the dirt circle at home. Smith was able to pick it up and flip to a Crew Clark, but too late to get the runner from third. He scores at 3 nothing. The pitch is a chopper to the third baseman, Jake Repay. It should end the inning, and it does, on a throw to Jackson Soto at first. 5-3, Shung beyond. Shung beyond. Bennett, Shung beyond. Grounds out for the final out of the first inning. An interesting inning, and unfortunately not a good one for the Rockets to open uh, their night here in our first broadcast of American Legion Baseball. Three runs on one infield hit, and a runner left on. We have finished a half inning, 3-0. The Challengers lead the Rockets. Our American Legion Baseball season is underway. Clue. Kate. Cake. Cake out. Cake <laughs> out. My shot. Man, what a glorious summer day. Joe's surprisingly cheery response can be traced to what's in his golf cart cup holder. Try again. These trees are majestic. It's the McCafe line of delicious rejuvenating beverages. Joe's enjoying the delicious wonder of the new blueberry pomegranate smoothie made with blueberries and raspberries with a splash of pomegranate juice. And speaking of splash... Man, I love golf. There's always something new to love from McCafe. At participating McDonald's. The concrete jungle, home to the burger devotee, adept at discovering deliciousness. The aroma of thick-cut apple with smoked bacon. The spicy, cool kick of habanero ranch sauce. Woo! Things that send a burger devotee's senses soaring. And McDonald's, hungry for their dedication, has just the thing to attract them. Three new quarter-pounder burgers. Bacon, habanero ranch, deluxe, and bacon and cheese. Only true devotees can spot burgers this good. And they're another new way to love McDonald's. At participating McDonald's. 1580 KGAL. Hey, welcome back. American Legion Baseball. It is our 11th summer of Legion Baseball on KGAL Radio. KGAL. Lest there be any doubt. You know, it starts with a K. I don't get it. <laughs> I had a 14-year flashback suddenly just before the break. I don't know what it was. But it's KGAL, of course, locally owned and operated, and the only station in our area that is locally owned and operated. A Get down there. A rarity in radio these days, and we are very pleased to be local and bring you our 11th summer of American Legion ball. We split the summer between the two teams from our region. They would be the Mid Valley Rockets on the field here tonight, basically out of uh, Albany, Lebanon area. And also the tea girding builders, and they will be the builders now. We've always called them the builders, market men, uh -huh. the builders now, tea girding builders. The third season that Tom Girding has been the, the major supporter for baseball in Corvallis. And they are off to a good start. They were 7-1 and one as of Wednesday, and I know they played Thursday and Friday, but I checked the Gazette Times online and found nothing. Really? I could not find a score wow. for Thursday or Friday. And I tried to uh, put in uh, T. Girding Builders. They may be on Facebook. I don't know my Facebook password. <laughs> it won't let me in. Oh, nice. Here's two balls and no strikes to the leadoff hitter for the Rockets, trying to get even down 3-0 here in the bottom of the first, Jake for pay. Third base, Andrew Kettleton, the second baseman, hit second, and Jackson Soto, the first baseman, back third for the Rockets, wearing uh, dark blue, white trousers, dark blue shirts with the white numerals, and Trevin Demilio will throw a strike, two balls and a strike. Trevin T-R-E-V-E-N, Demilio, right-handed pitcher, left-handed batter, Jake Rappay. He and his brother Luke playing together this summer for the Rockets. The pitcher looks like a strike, and it is. Two and two. The Rockets were five and four until yesterday. They dropped a doubleheader here yesterday to drop five and six on the season. 
and apparently it has already been determined that they will be in uh, the fourth place game at 9 o'clock tomorrow. We will not carry the game uh, tomorrow. Next game will be with the Rockets up at Willamette University on Monday against the Whitnell Dodgers, always a good team out of our Legion League. Pitches low ball three, so a full count to the leadoff hitter. It was bases on balls that did in Crew Clark in the first. He had two easy outs to ground out the fly ball to center and then three walks, an infield single, and a wild pitch. Scored three runs, three nothing. A three-two pitch is swung on and chopped towards the second baseman, Alex Torres, who will field it cleanly and throw out Jake Lepay, one gone. Number two, Andrew Kettleson. Andrew Kettleson is the second baseman. It's always nice to be here at North Eugene High School. It's a nice field. It's a stadium, really. Yeah, it is. Not just a field that we sometimes play in. <laughs> it's a beautiful stadium, nicely kept. The bleacher, the, the seats, they're not even bleachers. They're actually seats that you would see at a, right. you know, like a major league park. And the press box, which for years had been just very long and somewhat hollow because it was all whatever granite, whatever the material was, really had kind of an echo to it and big and large. Pitch misses ball one to Andrew Kettleson. One ball, one strike. They have redone the press box, and the windows did not open, and this led to a problem that you couldn't capture the crowd noise yeah. in a broadcast from the press box. Swung on base hit, solid base hit for Andrew. You may have heard the crack of the wooden bat. It is the Grant Smith no, Memorial no, no. Wooden yeah, Bat yeah. Tournament. They do this each year here at North Eugene. I'll tell you a little bit of the history of this with Grant Smith in, in the course of the game. Don't let me forget. All right. But they've redone the press box, and in, it's smaller, it's narrower, which means it doesn't have the echo, the hollow feel that it had before. It was rather strange. You would sit actually on the floor, but there was an opening under the uh, counter. So your feet would go underneath there, but you would actually be sitting on the floor of the press box. Yeah. There was a strike called Jackson Soto. It was like a dugout below us, though, because that area where your feet was mm -hmm. dug out mm -hmm. under the counter, which was almost even with the floor. But the windows did not open. But now it is narrower. The echo is gone, and the windows do open. But it led to a tough decision tonight. You were going back and forth for many, many minutes before the game. One strike to Jackson, and the pitch will be outside of ball. Count even at one. The part that is open, you can open the window, but there is a screen. So you're not only looking through the screen of the window, but then you're looking far away to the screen, the net from uh, behind home plate, which somewhat dampens the ability to see the ball, although it's getting darker, and that assists the pitches outside. Earlier, I determined that looking through the two screens, I had trouble following the ball in the game prior to this, so I'm sitting on the side with the two window panes, the open window and the window that is in front of it, but it's a little hazy, but it's it's a little clearer than looking through the two screens. <laughs> two balls at one strike. You went back and forth for, and it, it seemed like an hour. It, well, it was. I mean, that's true. It probably was close to an hour. 2-1, a floater, off speed, floats too low, ball three, three and one. So the Rockets trying to start a rally here in the bottom of the first after giving up three runs in the top of the first. Their record five and six now in the season after the doubleheader loss yesterday. One in extra innings, that would be eight, six, five, and then a three-nothing loss in the second game of two. Pitch is ball four. So maybe a rally going for the Rockets here in the bottom of the first. Runners at first and second. One out and Luke Rapay, the DH, will hit. Well, that's a pretty good number three and four hitters, Jackson Soto and Luke Rapay. Right guy to get something going here for the Rockets. See if he can put one into a gap somewhere. And heading out to talk with his pitcher, Trevin Dumilio, will be K.J. Strickland. Quick talk, didn't have much to say. Yesterday, the Rockets were defeated twice. They lost 6-5 in eight innings to AIM, those athletes that were moving. Yes. And they lost 3-0 to the Portland Barbers, who clipped them in a shutout. 
That's a great name for a baseball team, a barber. And they lost on Thursday to the Portland Lobos, 3-0. Oh. So they have dropped three games in the tournament, pitch strike, without a win, and that's why they will be playing in the fourth place game tomorrow at, uh, at 9 o'clock here. Again, a game we will not cover. Mm. Strike one to Luke Rapay out of Lebanon, Lebanon High School. DH tonight. Trevin Demilieu checks the runner at second and delivers, and it's low and in the dirt. They're going to throw down a third base, and it will be thrown offline, and both runners will move up on a pitch in the dirt. On a wild pitch, Andrew Kettleson, a good jump, will go to third. The ball really didn't go anywhere. K.J. Strickland was able to pick it up quickly, but he threw offline to third. Well, and it was a good job by Andrew Kettleson at, at second base who, who saw the ball get away. Like you said, it didn't get away far, but he went as soon as he saw it bounce away from the catcher. And an errant throw assisted in him getting to third safely. So both runners move up. Jackson Soto to second. Runners at second and third with one out for Luke Rapay. And a 1-1 pitch will be outside ball two. Really nice. I don't know the names of the two people who are here with us tonight, but they've really been nice to us since we've come in. They've assisted us in every manner. Um, and they told us that this game really does not matter in the standings. 2-1, it's hit up the middle, oh. that's going to be a base hit. One run will score, they will send the second run home, and the Rockets will be down just one as the throw comes on to home. The throw to second, sliding into second, as Luke Rapay saw that the throw was going through, so Luke rounded first and quickly took second. A throw that probably should have been cut off. I think so. I don't know that it was capable of being oh, cut wow. off. Didn't look like there was a cutoff man anywhere in the middle. No but it uh, probably should have been. Would have kept him at first, at least. But Luke will go to second on the throw, but gets two runs batted in, and suddenly the Rockets are within one. And to finish uh, that thought, the, the gentleman here tonight said, this game does not count in the standings. The challengers will be in a semifinal game tomorrow that will determine who will play in the championship game later right. in the day. There will right. be two semis tomorrow. Then the winners will play in the championship game late tomorrow night. But the challengers are already, the uh, Rockets are already in the fourth place game at 9 o'clock. Yeah. So the pitcher for the challengers is probably not one that they would normally use. Well, it's not per se their ace, is what you're trying to tell me. Hence, we may see some runs. We might, yes. One ball, no strike to Jacob Caston, center fielder, who with a, a hit here could tie this game in the bottom of the first inning. Instead, he chops one towards third. Tommy Alstrom will look the runner back to second, throw to first for the out. And the second out of the inning, 5-3, Jacob Kastner is Brent on. Trent Webb is the right fielder and the sixth hitter in the order for the Rockets, batting here in the first inning. So if they are to tie things, see what Trent does, right-handed hitter. Repay at second. Two runs batted in on his single. A long stare from Trevin Demilio to his catcher, K.J. Strickland. Now looks back to second, and he does throw, and there's a strike. Austin Smith, the catcher, would be next. The T. Girding Builders, as I said, they are off to a good start this season. They were 7-1 as of Wednesday. They did play Thursday and Friday. Again, I could not find a pitched inside. I thought maybe there was going to strike Trent, but it broke back away from him, but still a ball. One ball, one strike. But they seem to have a pretty solid group together from Corvallis High School, Crescent Valley High School, Santa Am Christian. Yeah. And uh, there's another, and Paloma, a player from Paloma, and Monroe, one from Monroe. Right called on the outside corner, one and two. Yeah, that's really not that surprising if you look at the last day of the season. Corvallis was playing Crescent Valley at Goss for the championship. Yeah. So it's not surprising that players from that team makes up a pretty good T. Garrity team this year. And I don't think they have Luther Ellenson, who was the pitcher of the year yeah. uh, in 5A. Pitch swung on a chop foul. Luther today is actually playing baseball. He's up at Goss Stadium. It's the 5A, 6A uh, All-Star mm -hmm. games that they play. They play two today and one tomorrow. 
Luther Ellenson is there from Corvallis. Henry Rondo, the outfielder, is. And uh, Tanner Holland from Crescent Valley. Those three are on uh, the All-Star, the 5A All-Star in the state. And those three are playing for the girding builders. There's a whack down the left field line. This game is tied. On his way to second with a game-tying double will be Trent Webb. And suddenly it looks like <laughs> we may have... One of those Legion games. We might. <laughs> for the first one of the year, it's 3-3 already. And we are in the bottom of the first, oh, which has gone on 20 oh, minutes. <laughs> there is, by the way, a two-hour time limit to the game, apparently. Yeah. Two-hour time limit even for the last game? Yeah. Uh, even, uh, even if it's the fourth inning? <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe the second inning. <laughs> Could I mean, I'm going to say this. Uh, unless things change dramatically, we are not going to get a full game in here today, I don't think. Oh, no. I mean, it, I mean, if each inning takes 20 to 30 minutes. We are tied at three, and Trent Webb on second, and here in the bottom of the first, the Rockets with a chance to actually take the lead as Austin Smith looks at a ball, ball one. Austin Smith, the catcher, right-handed hitter for the Rockets. Occasionally you'll hear the wind that come through the, the door here, gusts of wind. But it's been a really pleasant summer day after a couple of rainy, cooler days. Pitch is fouled away. Or the football, football action going on over there. There is a football game. I'm not sure exactly who plays there, but it's Corvallis against uh, a team from, uh, they said, it wasn't, it wasn't Eugene. Did they say Hillsboro? Maybe Hillsboro. Oh. But they come down to Eugene here to play. Hmm. And I'm not sure who participates, whether some of the football players from high school do. I'm, I don't know. I don't know. But that game uh, has ended. Oh. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's a halftime because there's still people over there. Hmm. You may hear some cheers and wonder why <laughs> people are going nuts when they, you know, maybe ball one. Speaking of which, it's 1-1, one, 1-1 one, one one to Austin Smith. Pitch is swung on, chops slowly off the mound. Demilio picks it up, makes the long throw to first, and he gets him. Austin Smith is gone, but the Rockets with a nice rally. I thought, Scott, maybe after the half inning, this would be a long night for the Rockets, but uh, it may be a long night for the announcers. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> As the Rockets get three runs, they come up with three hits in the inning. They leave a runner. We have finished one. Rockets three. Challengers three. Our American Legion baseball season begins on KGAL. What do you expect to accomplish this year? Whatever the task, it's easier with the top-selling subcompact tractor, the Kubota BX70 from Lynn Benton Tractor. And now during Kubota's Great Expectation sales event, you'll not only get a great deal on the BX70, you can expect great versatility, performance-matched implements, and great value. Raise your expectations with a new Kubota BX70, now with financing as low as 0% APR. There's a BX Series model for you at Lynn Benton Tractor on McLean Street in Silverton or on Highway 99E, Tangent. Albany Grocery Outlet Park and Market across from the Heritage Mall has Senior Day. The first Tuesday of every month, $2 off every purchase of $15 or more. Seedless watermelon, only $2.99. 35-pack crystal geyser water, just $3.99. And two pounds of delicious and satisfying red or green grapes, only $2.99. See store for details. And remember, Senior Day now at Albany Grocery Outlet Park and Market. 100% satisfaction guaranteed across from the Heritage Mall with bargains on the brands you trust. 1580 KGAL. 3-3, our score after one inning tonight. It's the Challengers. They are the host team for this Grant Smith Woodbat tournament and the visiting Mid-Valley Rockets. I, I said that tonight's game doesn't count. That's misleading. That's a uh, misuse of the, of the language. It's just not important to the standings. The Rockets have already dropped their first three games here, so they will be playing in the fourth place game tomorrow morning. Right. And the Challengers have won all of their games so far. They've won three. Actually, I guess they would have won. Uh, they won a doubleheader yesterday. They've won four. They won a doubleheader yesterday. Won a, if they win tonight, it would make four. But since they already have three wins, they know that they are in the semis tomorrow. One of the four teams that will be in the semis to determine the competitors in the championship game tomorrow night. Does that make sense? <laughs> Here is a ground ball to the uh, third baseman, Jacob LePay, by K.J. Strickland to start the second inning, and there is quickly one out. Crew Clark in the first inning had two quick outs, 
And then the damage happened. <laughs> then walk three batters, an infield single off the glove of Jake Repay. And uh, it was, although it lay on the ground in the infield, there was no one to quickly retrieve it. Two runs scored. And with a runner on third, a wild pitch scored a third run in the inning. Three runs for the Rockets, uh, for the uh, Challengers, but the Rockets countered with three in the bottom of the first. That's why we are tied. Strike one to the number nine hitter, Alex Torres. There was three runs on only one hit. There wasn't any errors or anything either, just a lot of walks. He follows this one off. Realize the number did get the positions written in for uh, the uh, players. For the challengers, nothing in two. The 0-2 pitch will bounce blocked by the catcher, Austin Smith. The Grant Smith wood bat tournament, they are using wood bats. I remember the day when uh, it would have been redundant to say wood bat. <laughs> but then the metal bats came along. I always wonder why they considered metal bats safer than the wood bat. The wood bat could split and perhaps splitter, which is the really dangerous thing, not just split, but splitter. Send pieces flying. Here's the pitch in the dirt, ball three, a full count three and two yes but it seems to me that that metal bat became immediately more dangerous because of the speed of the ball coming off the bat you take uh, like a third or first baseman moving in on a bunt and plus possibly playing halfway to home plate the speed of that the ball coming off the bat was a danger so they are now using different metal bats the three two pitches chopped towards the third baseman the foul 3-2 pitch again from Crew Clark to Alex Torres. One out in the second. We, well, when we were up at Willamette last year, Scott and I saw a bat that had been broken. And we thought someone was guilty of corking. Remember corking. we saw the cork on the inside? Yes, we did. And you, if you're a baseball fan, you know the stories of corking the bats in Major League Baseball to produce a little greater speed, a little more impact to the ball. Here is a 3-2 pitch, and it is fouled away again. But we saw a bat with cork on the inside. We thought, oh, oh, oh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> somebody got caught. But it turned out that that is the new bat. It is a metal bat, but on the inside there is cork, but just a, a rim, the outer rim. Pitch is swung on, and uh, he did get a piece of it. It was a foul ball. He was heading towards first as if he missed it, but he got a, got a piece. But it is not all cork on the inside. And just that, that little circumference, that little rim of cork inside the metal slows the speed of the ball off the bat. And I don't know what the other material is that, that represents the core of the inside of the bat. I don't know. 3-2 has popped up. Should be the second out of the inning for the second baseman, Andrew Kettleson, who will call everyone else off, and he's got it. Two quick outs. Oh, Maybe things will settle down tonight. Well, we'll see. I mean... Crew had two quick outs in the first inning and then <laughs> sort of lost <laughs> control. Here's David Bellamy, who was the left fielder tonight. I don't know how many of you uh, back in the uh, Albany Corvallis area would know uh, Ron Bellamy, but Ron Bellamy was a feature writer for the Register Guard for many years. Strike. And a really good writer. Someone we always enjoyed at our home. He's not in here right now, is he? No. No, he's no. down there. Okay. Yeah. But we always enjoyed his articles, and I knew that he was a good writer, and I've always liked the sports writers. And Ron, a very talented individual, who then became uh, in charge of the, uh, the sports page, but they had a couple of other gentlemen follow him as the feature writer. Most recently, Grant Schroeder, who uh, went to write for USA Today. Ah. But they don't have a feature writer right now for the Register Guard because they, as many, have cut back on costs. Here is a 2-1 pitch that is inside and almost strikes David Bellamy. It's 3-1. and one. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Something about two outs. <laughs> when Crew gets two outs, he loses control. He walked three batters with two outs in the first, and they all scored. But Ron was in here as a keeping the score tonight for the challengers because his son David is playing. He is retired now. Not just a question. Yes. 3-1 is ball four. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. 
runner at first. Here's Eric Long, the shortstop. He flew out to the center fielder, Jacob Caston. And the first was the second quick out of that inning, which would produce three runs for the challengers. And then the Rockets would answer with three, and that's why we're tied here in the second inning. And we're a half hour into the game. <laughs> A two-hour time limit tonight. Not only is it a seven-inning game because they play so many in a day, uh -huh. but there is a two-hour time limit, which would be right around 10. Pitch misses high, ball one to Eric Long. But with this, the Woodbat Tournament, Grant Smith was from Eugene, says in a little note here in the program, a father, Challenger board member, and fan extraordinary. Two sons played for the Challengers. Served on the board for many years. Pitch is swung on a miss. Outside pitch. Runner breaks towards second. Throw down to second, and he is safe. Ooh. Closer than, yeah, closer than it looked like it was going to be. A good break by David Bellamy. But Austin Smith, a one-hop throw was on the money down there and right at the feet of the sliding David Bellamy, but he slides in safely. Eric Long swung at that pitch, I think, simply to protect the runner because it was well outside. Yeah. So a ball and a strike to Eric. But again, Crew was well outside the strike zone, and this one is whacked on one hop to the first baseman. Jackson Soto will go to the bag unassisted, and the side no is retired. Uh -huh. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on. An inning and a half done. We're tied at three. Rockets coming to bat tonight on KGAL. Wouldn't it be great if you could take the comforts of home with you when you travel? Well, you can. At Lassen RV in Albany, we sell vacation homes on wheels. When you travel, you don't have to lug suitcases in and out and sleep in strange beds. Hit the road with your vacation home and visit some of our grand national parks, or even better yet, your grandchildren. Lassen RV, where friends send their friends. Just east of I-5 on Highway 20 in Albany and online at LassenRV.com. You will always get your money's worth, and the food is fresh, original, and tasty at Extapa Family Mexican Restaurant in Lebanon. Open areas or cozy booths, you'll find Extapa's service superb and menu variety most excellent. Visit them for lunch or dinner where the parking is convenient and the atmosphere is sweet. Are you part of an office group? Groups of 10 to 25 are always invited, and $3 drink specials are always offered. Enjoy Extapa Family Mexican Restaurant today at 25 North Main in Lebanon. 1580 KGAL. Back here at North Eugene High School, you have to like their choice of music. The Beatles, I want to hold your hand. Brings back memories of the 1960s. College years. A freshman in college when the Beatles really? came. I was at a school outside of New York City, and the Beatles coming to New York was a big thing. Hmm. The stations there all vying for to be the, the Beatles station. WABC. WMCA. And uh, Murray the K, whatever station he was on, <laughs> that was a small <laughs> one. But Murray became the fifth Beatle. Oh. And uh, kind of increased the ratings for his station. Ball one is thrown to Jacob Buley here as Jacob, the number eight hitter, leads off in the bottom of the second. Seven batters in the first inning, three runs for the Rockets. He chops one foul down the third base line. 1960, huh? 1963, oh. and actually January of 64, is when they arrived in New York. Hmm. I was <clears throat> not thought of at that time. I was well thought of as a college student, <laughs> <laughs> studying for the ministry at the time. <laughs> what did you laugh at that for? I see, I see that worked out well, didn't one, it? 1-1 one, one is fouled away. One ball fouled into the... Love of the catcher, one ball, two strikes. What happened there? Well, that's nasty. That's I'm not going to answer that. Oh, okay. <laughs> one ball, two strikes. Jacob Buley, Sawyer Reed, and then the top of the order, Jake Repay here in the bottom of the second. Yes, bottom of the second for the Rockets. They are the home team. Ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, things change. <laughs> Here I am today. Two balls, two strikes, swung on and missed, strike three. Number four. So Jacob Buley is the first out here. Maybe we will get uh, Maybe. a quicker game than we thought. Well, I said, unless things change dramatically, we wouldn't. But pretty, pretty quick, top of the second. One quick out here in the bottom. 
Sawyer Reed, shortstop, left-handed hitter, of course, out of West Albany High School. Lots of West Albany names in this lineup tonight, and abundance on the roster. I counted eight of them on the roster. Pitch misses low. West Albany tied for first place with Crescent Valley and Corvallis and Dallas. Yeah, that, that four-way tie. In the mid Willamette Conference. And a number of these players, very talented players, I think pitch framed but misses ball, ball one. I, or ball two. Looking at the, the roster, I think the pitching presents a, a problem. And it often does for the Legion teams. They play a lot of games in the course of the summer, play them back-to-back -back evenings. Strike called two and one. Yeah. But there's not a, a lot of pitchers that we recognize from Wes Crew. Clark would be one. Yeah, and Joe Miller was the other. Joe Miller. And then it has, uh, let me see here, Jacob Repay listed as a pitcher, who we did see a little bit uh, sometimes. He was, the, I guess, the second day for Lebanon. He's a younger man, a sophomore in high yeah. school, right? Yeah. And then Brandon Marquez, the uh, former warrior, now sweet home, he's listed as a pitcher also. Pitch is chopped fair to the first baseman, similar to the final out of the top of this inning. This one taken by the first baseman, Jordan Thompson. Tom Thompson. I do have the eye in <laughs> uh, the, the chart for the defensive chart. Jordan Thompson handles it unassisted for the out. Two gone quickly. And Jake Repay will step in. He grounded out to the second baseman, Alex Torres, his first time up. So Trevin Camilleu, who struggled through the first comms here in the second, gets quick, two quick outs, but throws ball one to Jake Repay. Trevin. Sometimes takes a long time to get his sign. Has one here, and he throws a strike on the inside corner. I was in the midst of telling you about Grant Smith. Watch, they'll get the out. <laughs> oh, yeah. He had two sons who played for the Challengers, served on the board for many years, the Challenger board. Probably saw more Challenger games than anyone other than Gary Selby, after whom the field is named here. Long-time coach. Really nice gentleman to pitch. Oh, on the outside corner, mm. strike two. Grant Smith died suddenly in 1991. The family asked that contributions be made to the Challengers in his name. The tradition continues of one of our annual tournaments being named in his honor and bears the name as the Grant Smith Woodbat Invitational. Where the Rockets play tonight in a 3-3 tie and the pitch is swung on, hit slowly towards the second baseman, Torres. Whoop, must have hit, either hit him off his feet or just foul at home plate. It is a foul ball. Rolled out towards the second baseman, but it must have perhaps either struck the batter, Jake Repay, or simply hit at home plate. It is a foul ball. One ball, two strikes. Again, as Trevin once again deliberates there before he throws, and it swung on and whacked toward center field, but right in the path of the center field. Sean Bion. And it's Sean Bion who takes it for the final out. So three up, three down for Trevor Trevin Demilio and both pitchers have a very effective second inning after both giving up three runs in the first. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. Two done. Tie game at three. Rockets, Challengers tonight. I KGAL. Mark Thomas Motors GMC Buick is downtown Albany's only full-service car and truck dealer. And the Mark Thomas Motors downtown service department has built a reputation for customer satisfaction. They definitely go the extra mile with local area pickup and delivery, service for all makes and models. Dewey and the crew are at your service Monday through Saturday. Take your vehicle into Mark Thomas Motors downtown Albany service department, 5th and Ellsworth, or Santi Am across from Fred Meyer in Albany. Albany Burgerville is celebrating over 50 years of serving customers fresh, great-tasting food with a mission to serve with love. Now featuring the Ham Havarti Sandwich, all-natural diamond ranch ham layered with melted Havarti cheese, fresh slice of tomato on a toasted hoagie roll, complemented with a seasoned tradition chocolate hazelnut milkshake. Pick up an Albany Burgerville rewards card now. Cash for every dollar spent. Albany Burgerville is celebrating over 50 years of serving customers fresh, great-tasting food with a mission to serve with love. Albany Burgerville. Fresh. Local. Sustainable. Serving the Mid-Valley for over 50 years. You're listening to News Talk 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis.
Hey, thank you for joining us tonight, American Legion Baseball, the start of our 11th summer. We started back in 2003. We don't do all of the games, but we broadcast games for the Rockets, Mid-Valley Rockets, and T-Girding Builders, Corvallis. We do, in the course of the summer, about 20 ball games. Hmm. Pitch 1-1 one -one here to the leadoff hitter here at the top of the third, who is Joe Schindler, the shortstop and the number three hitter. For the challengers in a 3-3 tie as Crew Clark throws, and there's a base hit, solid base hit up the middle for Joe Schindler. Base hit to center. Number 19, And one on, but nobody out. Only the second hit of the game for the challengers. I was just about to say that because in that first inning, the three-run inning, there were three walks in succession. Then an infield single off the glove of Luke or Jake Rapay. A third base we had to go far to his left to try to stop that ball. Went off his glove. And it just lay innocently on the ground as two runners scored. It did. And a wild pitch would later score the third. They only had the one hit, and it was an infield single. So this is just the second hit of the game, a solid hit by Schindler. And Dalton Pachano, who is their cleanup hitter, and he received the, uh, the second of the three walks in succession in the first inning from Clue Clark. He still awaits the first pitch, throws, shows bun, and pulls back and takes ball one. Baseball is a funny game like that, Ray. Little innocent infield single scores two. Yet you could rope one to the right fielder and get nothing. You know my feeling on that. Yeah. Dave, you should have to do it yeah. again. <laughs> yeah. You can do it twice, then you're on base. Other than that, it shouldn't count. Yeah. Third baseman Jake Rapay up in the infield grass. There goes oh. the runner. He'll not swing. The batter will not swing. Throw down a second, and they steal second base. So no need for the sacrifice now. That was a great jump. Stolen base for Joe Schindler. And on your list at home, Schindler's list. Schindler's list. Yes, yes. I, I've, I've heard I, of it. I've heard where he had to use that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking in my head as well. Had so. to sneak it in somewhere. There you go. Joe Schindler has a stolen base. <laughs> and Dalton Pachano. Knew that he was stealing, just pulled back that time. One ball, one strike. And yeah, the bunt should still be on. If it was on to get into second, you'd think it'd be on to get into third. I would not do it now, but you might be right. Maybe they might just be sharpening some of the uh, the basics, the fundamentals in this right. game. Because while it, it does count in the record, the three wins that the challengers already have acquired puts them in the, a semifinal game tomorrow. Yeah. And if they win that one, they're in the final. But it's not particularly important to them. It's of little, no importance. The pitch is fouled away. So maybe they'll just do certain things like you know, practice, sharpen the bunting, yeah. moving runners along or whatever. Some people, it's a matter of course here to get ready for tomorrow. I would not bunt in this situation. Well, you were right there. He didn't. Because there's nobody out. Yeah. One ball, two strikes now, and not likely to bunt. And he is their cleanup hitter, Dalton Pachano. 1-2, Clark checks that runner at second and throws, swung on and missed, and he got him. See, if he would have bunted, the runner could have been a third right now, Ray. No, we're still one out. Jordan. Hey, clean up hitter can't bunt. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. It, going along with what you were saying about maybe trying to sharpen your skills, there could be a game. But if he can't bunt. <laughs> but what if he I has sharpened skills? <laughs> if, he if he can't bunt, we're okay. not going to do any good. Uh, we don't know. We don't know. That's it. We don't. First strikeout for Crew Clark. Runner at second with one out, and here is Jordan Thompson. He had the third of the three walks in succession in the first inning, all of whom would score. This one is wrapped. Grab by the second baseman, Andrew Kettleson. Kettleson went to his right, snatched that one out of the air just before it was headed into the gap, which certainly would have scored a run. Instead, he continues toward second base, tags second for the, the put out on the Joe Schindler, and it's a double play. Bunt would have been a third base. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to say that, actually. Nice grab by Kettleson. He grabbed that one. That was on its way into the gap and certainly would have scored the run. Instead, it's a double play. Good fortune for the Rockets. Nothing doing for the challengers in the third. It turns out that there's three up and three down. Nobody left on, of course. Two and a half done. We're still tied at three. Rockets three. Challengers three. American Legion Baseball makes its 2013 debut tonight on KGOF.
Painting is a simple pleasure when you get help from the friendly folks at Economy Supply Building Center. That's because Economy Supply is your neighborhood Ace Hardware and Contractor Center. So they know how to use and can help you select the right Ace Royal paint at a price you'll love. Colorful, high-quality Ace Royal paints start at the Everyday Economy Supply, a low price of just $23.99 a gallon. Remember, Ace is the helpful place, and you'll find Economy Supply Building Center where Highway 34 becomes Tangent Street in Lebanon. Treat your family with fresh Mexican cuisine at La Roca Mexican Restaurant. Pancho's guacamole is already famous. Taco Tuesdays are popular where you can get them for just a dollar. For 21 and over, try the Monday margaritas and Taco Tuesday Coronas. Fresh and original, try La Roca today at the corner of Queen and Hill in front of Fitness Experience. Open every day from 11 to 9 except Fridays when they close at 9.30. Reservations accepted by calling 541-928-6141. La Roca. 1580 KGAL. All right. Welcome back. Bottom of the third inning. Rockets looking to take the lead here. We're tied at three. Both teams with three runs in the first inning. And uh, no scores since. Here's Andrew Kettleson who leads off. And Andrew takes a pitch from Trevin Demilieu and takes low ball one. Andrew Kettleson singled and scored in the first inning. The Rockets in their blue uniforms tonight. The white pants inside. Ball two. Both teams with the blue trousers, but very distinctive difference between the two teams is the Rockets are in their dark blue jerseys and red for the Eugene Challengers to match the Highlander color here at North Eugene High School. You see the word Highlanders on the side of the high schools when oh, yeah. the left field. 2-0, ball three. Three balls, no strikes. Kettleson, Jackson, Soto, Luke Rappé, 2-3-4 for the Rockets here in the uh, third inning. Bottom of the third inning. Rockets, the home chosen home team tonight. Strike. Still living through the heartbreak of the eighth inning tonight. Or earlier this afternoon, the Beavers and their 5-4 loss to uh, Mississippi State. Pitch is swung on hard ground ball with third baseman. Scooped nicely by Tommy Alstrom, who will throw out Andrew Kettleson. I think it, it took 11. a nice hop. Yeah, a very good hop. Right into the love. <laughs> Could have been a surprising one because it really came up, but yeah. that was good fortune as it turned out. He was able to get the hands up in time. I think you're right. right. I, I think it did catch him a little bit by surprise. But it might have been good fortune because that... It was a screamer that it stayed down. Uh -huh. Here's Jackson Soto, who walked in the first inning and scored. Tied at three, bottom of the third inning. Jackson's first pitch swings and off speed pitch and misses. Strike one. I was out at the Fern Ridge Reservoir, what's left of it this year, this afternoon, and it pulled up just in the eighth inning. And uh, at that point, I heard a runner at first for Mississippi State. The Beavers had a 4-3 lead at that point. Here's a pitch to Jackson. This one will be low. And then a base hit. Well, actually, they at that point, they took out Andrew Moore. And another good game. We have about three runs in the second. Did not allow another run, although he's charged with a run in the eighth inning. They took Andrew Moore out and brought in uh, Matt Boyd. And uh, he allowed a single runners at first and second. Pitch outside. Ball three. And I was sitting there, the car, I stopped the car at Fern Ridge, so I had the windows open, and uh, Matt gave up the drive that went over the head of Max Gordon in center field. Two runs scored. And with the windows open, I just, I got, it was one of those bad moments. I'm mean, not proud of it. 2-1. Pitch is fouled away. But I, I said a bad thing. I said, oh, <laughs> and I, I just, it just came out because I was so caught up in the game and thought they were going to win. I thought with a 4-3 lead, they're going to hold it today. I just had that feeling. And it turned out that there was a van right next to me, and they were loading up the back, and they had some little kids standing there. <laughs> I really felt, I felt embarrassed. And you wondered why I snickered about the mystery yeah, comment I, earlier. That's why I tell that story. That's why it's a good thing. The 2-2 two -two pitch is hit high in the air and deep, and boy, that ball is traveling a long wow. way. It will travel all the way out to the warning track and to the wall, rounding second on his way to third with some good speed, and he has speed as Jackson Soto 
and a head first slide in the third with a triple. Right, he's also got power. Wowzers. He, that one looked like a good hit, but like you said, he just kept going. <laughs> hard to judge uh, from here. Yeah. When it was off the bat, and again, it's somewhat hard to follow the ball. You have the screen, I've got the double pane and <laughs> yeah. glass here. And I can sometimes look through the screen and, and you see the, the screen here and the screen behind home plate. But following the outfielder, David Bellamy, I didn't think he was going to have to travel that far. And he just kept going back, back, back. Yes. And finally went all the way to the warning track. And Soto, who can motor, motors to third. So a good chance for the Rockets to take the lead in the ballgame. They were down 3 nothing after a half inning tonight. And it looked dark. After, maybe after the Beaver moment today, I just am negative. But they scored three to tie it up, and there's a base hit from Luke Rapay to break the tie at three. Four-three, they take the lead. Base hit for Luke Rapay, who drove in two in the first inning with a base hit. This one, a base hit to right. And Jackson Soto scores to make it four-three. But I was... All of a sudden, I was really sheepish because I look outside the, the window and I see standing in the car right next to me in the parking lot there at Fern Ridge, you know. <laughs> I've, I had a, a beaver apparel on, so I, I wondered when I got out of the car if maybe the, you know, the father would say something. I understand or something. <laughs> Instead, he just gave me a rotten look. And I, <laughs> Jeez. And I, I muttered, you know, gosh, I'm sorry. And I didn't, I thought maybe I would explain, but I didn't, didn't explain. Uh -huh. Here's Jacob Caston, who has taken strike one. Oh, it only happened to you, Ray. Oh, that's I, what sports will do to you. That's yeah. It's wrong to get that involved. It's just uh, I just had a feeling they were going to win today. Pitch, you know. Hi. Your son posted something on Facebook a couple weeks ago, and, and it was along those lines about why do people? The worst thing you could ever do is get involved, attached to a sports. Yeah, I don't remember what the that exact was. The Kansas were. State night when Kansas State was two out. Oh, that was it. Yeah, yeah. In the uh, was it the ninth? Yeah, tied the game. Yep, then one in the tenth. But two days later, he posted or three days two days later he posted how good it is to be a sports fan. <laughs> yeah. When the Beavers came back and won, here's a one-one pitch to Jacob. Runner at first. Luke Rape who broke our tie here. It's four-three. Pitch misses. Ball two. This inning, by the way, brought to you by Independent Auto Works for any service, any parts, any year, any model. If it's Volkswagen related, Independent Auto Works is the answer. On 13th near campus, Independent Auto Works. John Gullich, you had a son who played the, for the Richie's Market, of course, the predecessor to the T. Gerding Builders. John is the owner of Independent Auto Works. Anything Volkswagen, they have it. 2 1 is the count. This one will be inside ball three. Jacob Caston, who grounded to third his first time up, followed in the order by Trent Webb, the right fielder. No shadows anymore, just darkness. Yes, the lights are starting to come on. Yeah, not darkness, but no more sunlight on the field. With the lights on, light standards here. Pitch is swung on a hit. Oh, line drive to the pitcher who will throw out the runner at first. Similar to the end. <laughs> Both teams have played very similar innings, except that the Rockets' difference is they get the run here. It looked like a, a tie-breaking single to end the top of the third, very close to the end of the top of the third. Instead, it was a line drive that was grabbed by Andrew Kettleson, who stepped on second to force the runner there, who was taking off thinking he was going to score. And here, a line drive to the pitcher, Trevor Demilieu, and he goes to first to pick off Luke Rapay, a double play to end the inning, side retired. But the Rockets, the difference is the Rockets get the run in the bottom of the third. They take a 4-3 lead. Three innings done today. We intend to play seven. American Legion Baseball continues on KGAL. The mission of this quality Mid-Valley builder is treat every job like it's our only job, no matter how big or small. And we don't stop until our customer is 100% satisfied 100% of the time. Now, Builders has stuck to this business plan since their beginning in 1992. They welcome commercial and residential jobs, big or small, it doesn't matter at Now Builders. See their list of referrals online at nowbuilders.com or call 541-926-2858. Figaro! 
Figaro's Pizza in Albany is celebrating spring with a large Mexican Fiesta Supreme. Now just $14.99, $15.99 baked. Smothered with beef, olives, onions, taco chips, and diced tomatoes. Laid over their picante bean sauce. Served with sour cream and jalapenos on the side. The Mexican Fiesta Supreme on sale now at the Albany Figaro's in front of Fred Meyer. Call 541-924-9303. Locally owned and operated, this is the very independent News Talk 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis. I find increasingly there's a mean streak in baseball players who like to swing at the first pitch before we come back <laughs> and do something. It happens too frequently to just be you know, some kind of wanton thing. Tommy Alstrom has swung and hit a base hit to lead off here in the top of the fourth inning with his team trailing 4-3. That would be the challengers from Eugene. Trailing the Mid-Valley Rockets, Crew Clark on the mound. So a runner at first, leadoff runner. A bunt back towards Crew Clark. Throw to first, we'll get uh, the runner there, but the sacrifice. No question there. Oh, okay. No, the sacrifice. Day, day, Brickland. So Tommy Alstrom will go to second, and uh, Bennett Shangbion gets the sacrifice. Sacrifice bunt. Could have done it last inning. They could have had a man on third. Not a double play. Yeah, with your cleanup hitter and a guy on second. You know, if I was a manager, I would I would manage it the way I want to manage it. If I wanted my cleanup hitter to bunt, he would bunt. Well, I pitch. If I demanded that he would bunt, I would do the same thing. But I wouldn't have to do that because I wouldn't be dumb enough. I'd say, here's okay. the guy. We only have one out. The runner's at second. Let's take two shots. The Beavers, when they set up, uh, what was the game when the... They lost. Was it against uh, Washington State that first Friday evening when they lost? They went for the bunt? He said yes. I heard a yes to yeah. my left. Pitches are that was the That was the Bend game where we were coming yeah. back, right? Coming back from yeah. the broadcast in Bend. The Beavers hit runners at first and second. The first, yeah, first and second, and they decided to bunt. Rather than go give everybody a chance to get a base hit and tie the game, they put the strike call. Potential winning run on second but with one out now. So they walk the next batter, which you knew they would do. And right. that's, that's a danger of the pitcher. You put a lot of pressure on him. Yeah. Ground ball, double play, Beavers lost. Mm -hmm. I would have, and I said this to Mary Jo as we were coming back from Bend, I would not have him bunt in the situation. I'd let him swing away. I remember. The first two batters had base hit. Pitches a high fly ball to right field, starting back now, coming in. And then making the grab is Trent Webb. Number took a step back and then wow. hastened forward to get the, the ball. I remember you saying that. You, you're telling me about that story. Yeah. Because they had two singles to start the inning. And I thought, you know, just let him uh, swing away now. There's, there's nobody out. Just let him swing away. Let's take a couple of shots at least tying the game. Yeah. But they bunted the runner second, third. They have to walk, load the bases. Double play, and they, they lost the game. And I understand... The, the wisdom of the bunt, the sacrifice bunt, but they're early in this ball game, and Crew Clark has had you know some, some problems, control problems and such. Your cleanup hitter, runner at second, one out, let him hit. He didn't hit, though. If he bunts, you have two outs and a runner at third. No, there was nobody out and a runner on second, though. Wasn't that the final out? No, the double play was the final out, remember? The line drive to uh, the second baseman. Because he, he got on first. Number what did they do here? <laughs> I, could have, I don't know. Like, did it hit him? It hit, hit him. Hit by a pitch. Alex Torres is hit by a pitch. This is what happens when we go back and talk about the previous innings. Might be good to keep an eye on the game. It yeah, might be. Runners at first and second. So Alstrom will let off with a single with sacrifice to second. Fly ball for the second out of the inning. And then a hit by a pitch places Torres on first, runners at first and second, and David Bellamy, the leadoff hitter, takes ball one. So runners at first and second, two outs, top of the fourth inning, 4-3, four, Rockets with the lead. That single by Alstrom, the third hit for the challengers, Rockets have five in the game, four runs and five hits. No errors, three runs, three hits, and no errors for the challengers, but runners at first and second with two outs. I'd have him sacrifice now. Oh, would you? <laughs> because I'm rooting for the Rockets. <laughs> well, there you go. So, if I, you know, 
Maybe I've got money on the game, you know. Well, you might. I don't know what you were doing before I got here. There's not a lot of money being a coach. You've you, got to make your money somehow. You were standing <laughs> You were standing at the top row talking to somebody when I got here, so I don't know what was going on. One ball, one strike. Could have been a bookie or something. David grounded out his first time up and walked and stole second in the, in the second inning. Oh, was stranded there. Pitch swung on, hit hard, but foul on the ground outside of first. Ball and two strikes. So here's the fourth inning deal. Crew Clark is a strike away from keeping the lead at one for his team, the Rockets. But David Bellamy is a hard hit ball away from tying this game. One and two. Clark looks back to second. Takes his time and throws, hit right back to him. He will take a few steps forward toward first underhand of Jackson Soto in the inning is done. Hit hard, but one hop right to Crew Clark, who will underhand to Soto for the out at first. And the Rockets keep the lead. Despite a leadoff single and a sacrifice, where does that get him? <laughs> Out of nowhere. <laughs> and a batter hit by a pitch. They'll leave a couple. Challengers leave two in the top of the fourth. No runs, two left. After three and a half, Rockets still with the lead. 4-3 Rockets tonight as we continue American Legion ball on KGAL. What do you expect to accomplish this year? Whatever the task, it's easier with the top-selling subcompact tractor, the Kubota BX70 from Lynn Benton Tractor. And now during Kubota's Great Expectation sales event, you'll not only get a great deal on the BX70, you can expect great versatility, performance-matched implements, and great value. Raise your expectations with a new Kubota BX70 now with financing as low as 0% APR. There's a BX Series model for you at Lynn Benton Tractor on McLean Street in Silverton or on Highway 99E, Tangent. Albany Grocery Outlet Park and Market across from the Heritage Mall has Senior Day. The first Tuesday of every month, $2 off every purchase of $15 or more. Seedless watermelon, only $2.99. 35-pack crystal geyser water, just $3.99. And two pounds of delicious and satisfying red or green grapes, only $2.99. See store for details. And remember, Senior Day now at Albany Grocery Outlet Park and Market. 100% satisfaction guaranteed across from the Heritage Mall with bargains on the brands you trust. 1580 KGAL. Bottom of the fourth inning, we thank you tonight for joining us for American Legion Baseball. Our 11th summer of Legion Ball is underway on KGAL Radio. 1580 AM, locally owned and operated and proud and rare to be local. I'm Radio Ray, and that's Scott Landon over there, Stat Man. No, no, no. As we go no. into the bottom of the fourth inning, Mid Valley Rockets up by 1 4 3 quickly moving game now and it is really rolling along here i mean what time we got here we are at uh, nine a little after nine yeah so in this next half hour 20 minutes for the first oh. inning whoops can you can you can you make it <laughs> that's it there you go all right ray barricaded <laughs> the door and there's a shot that will go to the wall oh he's gonna be on out. his way to third though and being thrown out is the leadoff hitter here, Trent Webb, who hit a shot to the wall, and it looked like their center fielder also took a shot to the wall. Sean Beyond, who was down for a moment, tried to make the catch and drop the ball out there in center field. But Trent Webb, a little foolishly heading towards third, was an easy out and a relay from the left fielder, David Bellamy, into his third baseman, Tommy Allstrom. Well, that was the second uh, straight at bat. That Webb double off the Hardly. Uh, the first one was down the line in, in left field. That one was to the gap in left center. Third base coach was waving him all the way, but he was out by uh, quite a quite a couple steps there. Good relay from the outfield for the challengers, and they cut down a runner. One out. Austin Smith swings and misses at the first pitch strike one. Now there, if you have a runner on second, you want to hold him at second if there's any question. But Right, you don't want to make the first out at third, do you? That was a quick retrieval of the ball out there. Yeah, it was. By the left fielder, David great. Bellamy. That's a great execution of a relay. In fact, it was just as his dad, Ron, was coming in here to the studio. That must have been a sign. <laughs> and my bag was blocking the door so that he didn't get to see his son make a fine play of wow. retrieval of the ball that Sean Bion could not hold on to and hit the wall out there. He's fine, by the way. He's okay. But a great relay. Whoa! Oh, and there, look at those hands. Tremendous play at third base. 
by the coach. Look at that. For the Rockets. He's shaking his hands a little bit. But. Troy Babbitt. That's De definitely Troy. Definitely Troy Babbitt. De de definitely Troy. <laughs> well, a good play. Two hands, Ray. He used two hands. Didn't try to get all fancy and barehand it with one. That was a shot down at third base, and he just turned and grabbed it with both hands. Swung on a miss, strike three, and Austin Smith, a strikeout victim. And two outs. So both teams are missing chances here Number to score. Yeah. Jacob Buley. Jacob Buley will bat with two outs. This half inning brought to you by Town & Country Realty, the Mid-Valley's number one real estate firm. For every multiple listing in the Valley, check their website, tncrealty.com. Town & Country Realty, real people providing real service. Bottom of the fourth inning, 4-3 four, Rockets, but two outs now, and nobody on with Jacob Buley, the left fielder who struck out his first time up. And that strikeout recorded against Austin Smith is just the second for Trevin D'Amelio tonight. Pitch is hit hard, but a, a one-hopper at the shortstop will pick it up, throw to first, and he gets the out. A fine play. <laughs> Very nice. I should not have said hit hard. It really wound up. It sounded good coming off the bat, but it was a rather slow hopper that the third baseman couldn't get, and the shortstop, Eric Long, ranging to his right, got it and made a terrific throw across his body to get Jacob Buley. Perhaps the nicest defensive play of the night on a 6-3 putout to retire Jacob. So no runs. There was a hit, but to Trent Webb thrown out trying to extend a double into a triple. Nobody left on. Four innings done. 4-3 Rockets lead tonight. Mid-Valley Rockets leading the challengers on KGAL. Wouldn't it be great if you could take the comforts of home with you when you travel? Well, you can. At Lassen RV in Albany, we sell vacation homes on wheels. When you travel, you don't have to lug suitcases in and out and sleep in strange beds. Hit the road with your vacation home and visit some of our grand national parks, or even better yet, your grandchildren. Lassen RV, where friends send their friends. Just east of I-5 on Highway 20 in Albany and online at LassenRV.com. You will always get your money's worth, and the food is fresh, original, and tasty at Extapa Family Mexican Restaurant in Lebanon. Open areas or cozy booths, you'll find Extapa's service superb and menu variety most excellent. Visit them for lunch or dinner where the parking is convenient and the atmosphere is sweet. Are you part of an office group? Groups of 10 to 25 are always invited, and $3 drink specials are always offered. Enjoy Extapa Family Mexican Restaurant today at 25 North Main in Lebanon. 1580 KGAL. One of the great moments of our high school and uh, Legion broadcast, and that is the taping of the scorecard from a scorecard that I saw years ago, really liked, but had to make copies of it and could never find a book that has the original. So there are two sheets, first through the fourth inning and a second one that goes from the fifth through the twelfth. Any more 12 innings, we just sign off. We're done. Yeah, just game walk over. out. <laughs> yep, game over. <laughs> Scorecards won't hold it. We're in the top of the, uh, the fifth inning as Crew Clark is a one ball and one strike count to Eric Long, the shortstop from the Eugene Challengers leading off here. Number two hitter in their order, Eric Long, Joe Schindler, Dalton Pichano in the bottom of the fifth. Seven inning game scheduled here, moving along quickly. Pitch is swung on ground of the shortstop, Sawyer Reed fields it cleanly and throws it out. One gone. In the first inning, speaking of Long, it appeared that Crew Clark and Trevin Demilio, depending upon how, much, how many pitchers are left for either team, would be gone quickly. Yeah. As they both struggled through long and difficult first innings, and both gave up three runs. And threw numerous pitches in doing so. Pitches chopped towards the second baseman, Kettleson to his right. Fields it, throws the first, and out by a long shot is Joe Schindler. Two gone very quickly here in the fifth. I think maybe Crew is listening to us, and maybe he's got like an earpiece or something, because we were saying how slow this game was going, and since then it has just picked up. We figure with the 20-minute first inning game, and there's a two-hour time limit on these games because of the numerous games which they play in a day's time, that we might be through two innings when the two-hour time limit <laughs> had uh, expired. Pitch is high for a ball to Dalton Pachano. I'd have him sacrifice here. Oh, he might as well, right? <laughs> this is going to be an ongoing thing, isn't it? The whole season. Give himself <laughs> up. 
The 1 0 pitch will miss ball two. Dalton walked in no. the first. See, he should have sacrificed the last time he was at the play, Ray. <laughs> it was him. He walked in the first, one of three walks in a row given up by Crew Clark. They all scored in the first, all three runs for the challengers. But he struck out with a runner at second, Joe Schindler, who had singled and stolen second, and nobody out in the third. Three balls and no strikes now to Pachano. Crew will throw maybe a kind strike on the outside corner, three and one. Jordan Thompson is on deck. Gets a sign from Austin Clark, catcher tonight. 3-1, that one's got a miss, yes. Ball four. This half inning brought to you by Going Postal, your friendly neighborhood shopping center. Located in North Albany's Hickory Station next to Richard's Cleaners on Hickory Street. UPS, FedEx, U.S. Postal Service, all with a friendly smile. Mention this ad, incidentally, 10% off UPS or FedEx shipments at Going Postal on in North Albany's Hickory Station next to Richard's Cleaner on Hickory Street. The runner at first, two outs here in the fifth. Dalton Pachano, and here's Jordan Thompson. He walked and he hit into that double play. Picks his one out and wrap it right into the gloves on, on a line shot. No need to throw to third. That's the <laughs> final out. Just wanted to make sure. <laughs> I think it was scared a little bit. <laughs> Jordan Thompson, who a couple of times tonight has had shots back to him. This one, he just reached to his right, and there was the ball. Lo and behold, it was in his glove through to first, forgetting perhaps because of the, the fright of seeing that baseball come at him that there were two outs already. Each pitcher's had a couple already today, but that so one was really smoked. He actually records four outs. because yeah. he, gets, he gets the line drive and throws the first. Does he get one in the next inning? That'd these be are, nice, wouldn't These it? are the kind of rules I would put in place <laughs> for baseball. Nothing doing. In the fifth. They do get a base runner on a walk, but nothing doing for the Rockets in the fifth. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. Still 4-3 Rockets leading on Kegel. Mark Thomas Motors GMC Buick is downtown Albany's only full-service car and truck dealer. And the Mark Thomas Motors downtown service department has built a reputation for customer satisfaction. They definitely go the extra mile with local area pickup and delivery, service for all makes and models. Dewey and the crew are at your service Monday through Saturday. Take your vehicle into Mark Thomas Motors downtown Albany service department, 5th and Ellsworth, or Santee Am across from Fred Meyer in Albany. Albany Burgerville is celebrating over 50 years of serving customers fresh, great-tasting food with a mission to serve with love. Now featuring the Ham Havarti Sandwich, all-natural diamond ranch ham layered with melted Havarti cheese, fresh slice of tomato on a toasted hoagie roll, complemented with a seasoned tradition chocolate hazelnut milkshake. Pick up an Albany Burgerville rewards card now. Cash for every dollar spent. Albany Burgerville is celebrating over 50 years of serving customers fresh, great-tasting food with a mission to serve with love. Albany Burgerville. Fresh. Local. Sustainable. 1580 KGAL. Last of the fifth inning tonight, American Legion Baseball, our 11th summer of doing this on KGAL Radio. Selected games for the Mid Valley Rockets and T Gurdy Builders. Tonight, the Rockets and Challengers fouled away strike two to the leadoff hitter here in the bottom of the fifth. Sawyer Reed, shortstop out of West Albany High School, leading off. Number nine hitter in their order tonight, Jake Repay and Andrew Kettleton to follow. 11th year of American Legion ball. We started in 2003. Pitch is low. One ball, two strikes. And as our luck would have it in 2003, Richie's Market, Corvallis team at the time, and Jack Richie supported the team for so many years. Yeah. They went to the World Series in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Swung on a miss. Strike three. The question is, did you go to Bartlesville, Oklahoma? Yes, we did. Wow. How was that? It was very hot. It was like the Beavers in talking about Omaha, Nebraska today, Bartlesville, Oklahoma, in August. They said it was something like 113 on the field Oh, for one of the games Wow, that day. How did they, uh, how did they do in the tournament? They made it to the penultimate uh, day, oh. and they were beaten by the team that would win the tournament. Mm -hmm. And they started their top pitcher against Corvallis, thinking that they would have a tougher time against Corvallis than the team they played the next day. Mm. They started him on short rest. Swung on a 
hard shot towards center, but Bennett Shongbion is there to put away Jake Repay, the hitter. And Jake will be 0 for 3 after they grounded out. Now lined out in center and popped a high fly to center here in the fifth. So two gone quickly in the fifth, and both pitchers have really settled down since the rough first inning. 4-3 Rockets. It was 3-3 after one. Here's Andrew Kettleson, who singled in the first inning and scored a run. And then grounded out in the third. Both teams put three runners on in succession in the first inning, and all three would score for both teams. Challengers did it with two outs, and the Rockets with one out in the first. One ball, no strikes to Andrew. Right-handed hitter. Left, uh, right-handed hitter. Pitch is chopped on the ground towards the second baseman, Alex Torres. Easy inning for Trevin. Well, 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 very good well, inning for him. Very few pitches and three up, three down quickly. Nothing doing for the Rockets in the bottom of the fifth. So five done now. Still 4-3 Rockets with the lead tonight. American Legion Baseball continues on KGAL. Painting is a simple pleasure when you get help from the friendly folks at Economy Supply Building Center. That's because Economy Supply is your neighborhood Ace Hardware and Contractor Center. So they know how to use and can help you select the right Ace Royal paint at a price you'll love. Colorful, high-quality Ace Royal paint start at the Everyday Economy Supply low price of just $23.99 a gallon. Remember, Ace is the helpful place. And you'll find Economy Supply Building Center where Highway 34 becomes Tangent Street in Lebanon. Treat your family with fresh Mexican cuisine at La Roca Mexican Restaurant. Pancho's guacamole is already famous. Taco Tuesdays are popular where you can get them for just a dollar. For 21 and over, try the Monday margaritas and Taco Tuesday Coronas. Fresh and original, try La Roca today at the corner of Queen and Hill in front of Fitness Experience. Open every day from 11 to 9 except Fridays when they close at 9.30. Reservations accepted by calling 541-928-6141. La Roca. 1580 KGAL. Welcome back to our broadcast. I have Scott. Uh, That's Scott Blankin over there. I'm Rady Ray, and Scott just said to me, boy, they are quick between innings. They are. I mean, feel like they're quicker than normal. I don't know. Well, they're calling Ricky Nelson Norman. We don't mess around, boy. No. And here's the first pitch of the inning. It's grounded to the shortstop Sawyer Reed, who will throw out the first batter of the inning, Tommy Alstrom. One pitch, one up, one out. Well, that's fine. Tommy out. Mid Valley has to lead, so that's, you know, fine with us. 4 3 Rockets in the sixth inning. Only five outs to work with for Eugene now in this game. A game that doesn't matter. I know that they have switched their lineup. They said, uh, right. the gentlemen up here said they switched their lineup around. It may be some players here who would not play in, for example, tomorrow afternoon when they play in a semifinal game to determine who will make the finals tomorrow. Here is a strike to Bennett Shangbian who pops it up. High pop-up. Could be trouble. Let's see what happens here. Going over, and it drops oh, wow. in fair territory. One of those tough plays, the way it was popped, Jake Repay, the third baseman, with his back to home plate, couldn't see it. Sawyer Reed, the Jay. shortstop, tried to come Jay. a long way from shortstop to get it. He just overran it. And the ball just drops in for a base hit. Neither one able to come up with it. Looked like maybe Sawyer would put it away because it was a tough play for Repay to turn with his back-to-home plate. But it drops in for a single. And it's just the fourth hit off Crew Clark. In the first inning, the three runs scored on three walks and an infield single. That's yeah, the first since the leadoff single in the fourth. So a base hit. An excuse me, pop down the left field line. Uh, do you like that one? It's one of those things, again, where I believe that uh, it's, it just is not right to get a base hit on a ball like that. They should make you do it twice. Wild pitch will go to the backstop. And that backstop a long way off. Runner goes to third. Throw down to third, and he is safe. He's out. He's out at third. <laughs> I thought he was safe, and I should not have called until the umpire said. I thought he slid in and that the third baseman, Jake Repay, had to pull the tag around to get him and that he was already in at third. But he's out at third. You were definitive in saying, he's safe. And it is difficult to see. You're looking through two nets. Pitch again will bounce to the uh, backstop. So a wild pitch does a favor, a big favor for Crew Clark. (laughs) It's a long way, as we mentioned, athletes in motion, even they would have trouble 
extending all the way to the backstop, even if they're in motion and do it all the time. It's yeah. a long trip to the backstop. Pitch is chopped slowly towards the pitcher. Clark, the foul ball at home plate. Another one that hit in foul territory at home plate and bounced out in the infield. Happened earlier. Two balls and a strike. It was a wild pitch that went all the way to the backstop, and as a result, the runner from first thought he could get the third, but Austin Smith cut him down on a throw to Jake Repay. 2-1, outside ball two. K.J. Strickland, who is the catcher, is the hitter. I thought he was safe. I thought he slid to the outside of the bag, and that Repay, when he had to turn and reach back to make the tag, maybe he yeah. was off the bag. Yeah, well, that's the thing. We couldn't really see that. Slow ground ball to the first baseman who will go unassisted to the bag and win the battle there, Jackson Soto. Jackson Soto takes the slow grounder, runs to the bag for the unassisted out, and the side is retired. Nothing doing for the challengers thanks to that wild pitch. You know, it's strange the way things turn out. <laughs> Baseball's a funny game, Ray. The ball should never have been a hit, a little pop down there, an innocent pop down the left field line, and there's no way that a wild pitch should wind up getting a pitcher out of trouble. There you go. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of worked out in that sense, though. But that's the game. Nothing doing. No runs. One hit. Nobody left on. We finished five and a half. There would be one more inning for the uh, challengers here if the Rockets can retire them in the seventh. They will win it. They lead 4-3. We'll see if they can add any runs in the bottom of the seventh in a moment on KGAL. The mission of this quality Mid-Valley builder is treat every job like it's our only job, no matter how big or small. And we don't stop until our customer is 100% satisfied 100% of the time. Now, Builders has stuck to this business plan since their beginning in 1992. They welcome commercial and residential jobs, big or small, it doesn't matter at Now Builders. See their list of referrals online at nowbuilders.com or call 541-926-2858. Figaro's Pizza in Albany is celebrating spring with a large Mexican Fiesta Supreme. Now just $14.99, $15.99 baked. Smothered with beef, olives, onions, taco chips, and diced tomatoes. Laid over their picante bean sauce. Served with sour cream and jalapenos on the side. The Mexican Fiesta Supreme on sale now at the Albany Figaro's in front of Fred Meyer. Call 541-924-9303. Fifteen eighty KGAL. All right, then. Bottom of the sixth inning. What has been an interesting game here, and we really had it misread from what we saw in the first inning, and that was each team, the Eugene Challengers, the host team here for tonight's game, and for this Grant Smith Wood Bat Invitational, scored three runs in the top of the first, and then the Rockets would come back and score three runs. An inning that took about twenty minutes. They have a two-hour time limit tonight, and we joked that. We may get through two innings and the game will end. <laughs> and since then, it's moved along quickly. Just one more run. The Rockets have that, and they lead 4-3 as they bat here in the bottom of the sixth. A little tapper towards the second baseman. Torres, a long throw to first, and will throw it away on his way to second. It'll be a base hit and an error. Oh, he got, uh, you going to give him an error all the way? Yeah. It was a tough play for uh, Alex uh, Torres. And he had to throw going away. He went to his right and was behind the bag at second and had to make a long Number throw. 21. Had to do it on a hop. But uh, they will score an error all the way here. Mm. Not, I don't know. Disagree. Tough love for Alex Torres, I think. Yeah. I don't think a good throw would have beat him. Jackson was... No, Jackson was hustling up the line, but, you know... Either way, he's on second, and that's a big insurance run. It is, because there's nobody down. out. Here's Luke Rappé, who has three runs batted in on the night. He bunts down the first baseline, and it is... Hit the grass, I guess. <laughs> it is a base hit. That O was uh, <laughs> apparently, and I did feel that it hit the, it hit the grass. It was not caught by the pitcher, Alex, or rather, uh, Trevin D'Amelio, who dove for that ball. It was a bunt. It was not a good one. You talk about not being allowed. It was not a good bunt because it was popped up, and it died because the pitcher, Trevin D'Amelio, dove for it and did not come up with it, but it went off his glove, so it died right there, and he could not throw out. Luke Rapeo gets a base hit out of it, and Jackson Soto goes to third. A little bit more 
Let's see. Luke Rupé, yeah. Not a good bunt at all, but they go back to the point. He's a cleanup hitter. Maybe that's why, you know, he was not used to bunting, and that wasn't a good bunt. I think maybe the cry from up here was just that it was a heck of an attempt by uh, Trevor Demilio, but was. he could not quite make it. That was a great attempt. That ball bounced just in front of his glove as he stretched out going towards the third baseline trying to get it. He dove, but couldn't come up with it. So it is a base hit for Luke Rappé, runners at first and third. And let's see what the Rockets can do to try to add to that one-run lead as they would go to the seventh. It could be a final inning, and they could get their first win of the tournament. Yeah. Pitch misses. Ball one to Jacob Kasten. <laughs> Jacob Kasten, who has grounded out and also hit into a double play, when he lined back to the pitcher, hit a shot, but with a runner on first, Pitcher Demilio was able to catch the ball on the line and throw the first to double off the runner, Luke Rappé. Runners at first and third, nobody out. Bottom of the sixth inning. 4-3 Rocket lead. They've dropped three games in the tournament. The game does not matter in terms of where they will be tomorrow. They would be playing in a, in a fourth place game. It would be the leadoff game here at 9 o'clock. We'll not broadcast from here tomorrow. We'll have their game on Monday from... Willamette University as they play the Withnell Dodgers. Always a good, good team in our Legion League area. Three. Pitch misses. Nice block by K.J. Strickland, the catcher. The ball in the dirt. Two balls and no strikes. Jacob Caston, Trent Webb to follow, and Austin Smith would follow him for the Rockets. Five and six on the season, but they've dropped three straight games here at the tournament. So even if they win this game, it's already determined that they would be in the, the fourth place game, the first game to be played tomorrow. And the challengers, even if they lose tonight, are guaranteed to be in a game, a semifinal game tomorrow. There will be two to determine the matchup, the final one tomorrow night here at the tournament. Pitch is fouled away out into the parking lot. As the darkness settles in a pleasant evening, I brought along a lot of clothes tonight thinking that maybe we'd be sitting outside to do the game. Yeah. They've redone the press box here at North Eugene we're High School. We've we reached the one hour and 30 minute mark. Nine minutes. <laughs> the announcement made that they've reached the 90 minute mark, that's to let the teams know that you have 30 minutes. Get it and done. And you're off the field. Yep. <laughs> that's it. Two hour time limit. Two balls, one strike to Jake to cast. And runners lead first and third. Jacob swings and he fouls this one away. Same shot out in that same parking lot. Actually, over towards the football field, that wouldn't go into the parking lot. Yeah, to the left would be the uh, parking lot where we parked. I saw your car. No hubcaps. We're behind us here. Yes. I always know when to find your car. That's a good thing, though. I always know if you're somewhere. If you're here, where those hubcaps went. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. The so one thing Toyota has never had to recall, and I understand that a lot of people have lost their hubcaps on that model. Yep. And color, that's the strange thing. I've seen two or three cars, your color, model, everything. Isn't that with, strange? With no, yes, no hubcaps. It's Same bizarre. Deal. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch is swung on, and the one hopper to the second baseman will step on second for one. Flips the first. Got him for the double play, but the run scores. Now, that was a good play by Alex Torres. The ball was not particularly well hit. But it was one hop in the right place for Alex. All he had to do was grab it, make one step to second, but then he had to make a strong sidearm throw to first. And I didn't think he could do it. I did not think he would get the runner at first, but he did. But he the did. run scores. No run batted in on the double play, but the run does score. It doesn't matter. And it gives the Rockets a two-run lead and a little extra edge heading into the seventh inning. But foul by so much, Webb. So much better to have just even that two-run lead compared to a one-run lead is, is crucial. So Trim Webb, who has doubled, he doubled in the first uh, inning, drove in a run. Luke Rappé has three runs driven in tonight, a two-run single in the first and a single one-run driven in on a single in the third. It's 5-3 right now for the uh, the Rockets. One ball, one strike to Trent. Austin Smith would be on deck. 
The Eugene Challengers, by the way, are the defending state champions from last year. American Legion ball. Pitches inside ball two, two balls and a strike. There's a nice uh, group here tonight for this game. <coughs> yeah, some people made the trip down from the Albany, Lebanon area. Strike call, two balls, two strikes. The trend. Yeah, I mean, you really should. It's a it's a beautiful park to watch a game from, and the, and the stadium seating here. It is. You know, they they have hopes of doing this uh, sort of thing up in Corvallis mm. at Taylor Field. Hanson Stadium at Taylor Field. That'd be good. Pitch hits him in the back. Trent Webb struck by a pitch. Struck in the back. Uh, we'll go to on, first. Been three. on base three times today. Smith. Here's Austin Smith. I guess technically the last time he wasn't because he tried to stretch it into a triple. Yeah, he doubled in the, uh, the first inning and drove in a run. And the last time up, he had doubled and hit that ball, sending the center fielder. Bennett Sean being right into the wall mm. in left center. But he tried to stretch the hit into a, a triple. The left fielder, David Bellamy, was able to pick the ball up and relay it in for the out at third. And now Trent stands at first with two outs here in the sixth inning. A big run home to give the Rockets a two-run advantage and a bunt. Bunted back on the screen. Not a sacrifice. No. <laughs> two outs. No. <laughs> They've been listening to you, though. They thought it was. Been a few, couple bunts. I'm going to do this for Landgren. That's right. Austin Smith grounded out, and he has struck out. Three strikeouts in the game for Trevin Emilio. I'm sure both teams this deep into the tournament and another game tomorrow are very pleased that their starting pitchers have gone the distance so far. Mm. And we are shocked. In the first inning, we would have said... Uh, you know, barring the fact that maybe at this point in the tournament sometimes, and since it doesn't matter what position they'll be in tomorrow, maybe they'd leave that pitcher in for a while and yeah. take some punishment if, if necessary. Yeah. Maybe, maybe if, they, if necessary. But still, we would have said, no, they're not going to be here for the end of this thing. No, but I also thought we might be in for a, a slugfest of like 15 to 12 or something. Trevin. Familiar, right-handed pitcher, checks that runner at first, Trent Webb, and he throws high and almost belted Austin Smith with that pitch. Austin looks down at Troy Babbitt, head coach for the Rockets. Made a great catch on him. One hard hit, one bounce shot down the third baseline a little while ago. One of the outstanding plays of the summer. You never have, you know, coaches and managers on the the webcam, you know. Oh. Pickoff attempt at first is going to be thrown away and will wind up in the bushes, so that will be a dead ball. <laughs> in the bushes. He's supposed to be searching for the ball in the bushes. He can't find it. It's lost. <laughs> <laughs> it is really neat the way they run it here. They have the dugouts, of course, first and third base, and then from the dugout to the outfield fence, there is a hedge that runs down both foul lines, a long, neatly kept hedge, something you don't see at most parks. Very nice. But the ball, that's the dead territory. The ball went all the way toward the hedge, but instead of being a wall where maybe it would bounce back in, right. it went into the hedge. It's gone. So only one base on the overthrow <laughs> for Trent Webb, but he does stand in a position for a possible run batted in for Austin Smith that would give his pitcher, Crew Clark, a three-run lead going to the seventh inning. Again, a seven-inning game tonight. A ball and a strike to Crew. Or to Austin, rather. Long time for Trevin to throw this pitch and now he steps off. Maybe he doesn't understand that if the game goes two hours and you're behind, you lose. <laughs> I don't know. Not that there's no contest. Stairs in for a sign. A long stare. One ball, one strike. Checks the runner at second and throws on the outside corner for a strike. One and two. One ball, two strikes. Runner leads from second. Five, three Rockets. Bottom of the sixth inning. Again, he takes a lot of time, but Trevin throws, and it's hit in the air towards right. Coming on the right fielder, it'll drop for a base hit. 
The Rockets have another insurance run. They're up by three. Wasn't sure whether that ball would have the distance to carry into the glove of Joe Schindler, the right fielder, but it did not. Rather than let that ball get by him, he suddenly stopped to make sure that he got it in one hop. Yeah. Hold the runner to first. But it is a run batted in for Austin Smith and a key one. So that attempted to pick off throw an error to the if pitcher on uh, the throw is key because it put Trent Webb on second and allowed him to score on the base hit by Austin Smith. 6-3 Rockets and the first pitch a strike to Jacob Buehle. Two runs home here. Key runs. Rockets extend the one run advantage to three. And Jacob Buehle, who has struck out and grounded out, will see what he can do here and maybe add a little more. Runner leads from first, Austin Smith. Would they send Austin? They do not hear, and the pitch is hit on the ground. Good hop to the shortstop, Eric Long, and he throws low to first and got him. <laughs> <laughs> umpire took a tumble. <laughs> the umpire slipped a little bit and dropped to one knee. I thought he was going to safe. And we had to wait to see whether it was a close play. <laughs> yeah, it's in first base. Good speed by Jacob Buley. <laughs> But uh, the umpire from one knee and falling backwards extends the right hand and says he's out. The inning is done. A couple of key runs, though, for the Rockets on uh, a couple of hits. They get a hit batsman that certainly helped in the inning and a big throwing error on a pickoff attempt. They lead it. They, the Rockets, lead it 6-3. We'll go to the seventh. Keep in mind, top of the seventh could be the final inning. We'll see what happens on KGAL. What do you expect to accomplish this year? Whatever the task, it's easier with the top-selling subcompact tractor, the Kubota BX70 from Lynn Benton Tractor. And now during Kubota's Great Expectation sales event, you'll not only get a great deal on the BX70, you can expect great versatility, performance-matched implements, and great value. Raise your expectations with a new Kubota BX70, now with financing as low as 0% APR. There's a BX Series model for you at Lynn Benton Tractor on McLean Street in Silverton or on Highway 99E, Tangent. Albany Grocery Outlet Bargain Market across from the Heritage Mall has Senior Day, the first Tuesday of every month. Two dollars off every purchase of fifteen dollars or more. Seedless watermelon only two ninety nine. Thirty five pack Crystal Geyser water just three ninety nine. And two pounds of delicious and satisfying red or green grapes only two ninety nine. See store for details. And remember Senior Day now at Albany Grocery Outlet Bargain Market. Hundred percent satisfaction guaranteed across from the Heritage Mall with bargains on the brands you trust. 1580 KGAL. The top of the seventh inning. It could be lights out here tonight. And we only have about 20 minutes uh, left for the ball game uh, tonight. Yeah, right. one way or another, this is going to be it. Two-hour time limit on these games. Seven inning games. And as we go to the top of the seventh, the Rockets lead at 6-3 after trailing 3-0 a half inning into this game. The number nine hitter, Alex Torres, will lead off. And Alex, on a bunt, pops it up and caught by the catcher, Austin Smith. Yeah, Tried to catch the Rockets off yeah. guard and yeah. instead popped it up just a few feet down the third baseline, Austin Smith. You know, I could no longer get up that quickly. And I admire that in catchers. Mm. <laughs> get out of a, a crouch like that that quickly. Just shot up. It would have to be a high fly ball for me to get up that quickly. <laughs> the catch. A towering fly ball behind pitches, the plate. Which is outside to David Bellamy. So one out on that bunt attempt. Strike called. Put out into the glove of Austin Smith. And one ball, one strike to David Bellamy. He on the night is grounded out. He's walked and he is grounded out. 0 for 2 as he takes maybe a little high. Two balls and a strike. Drew Clark looking for a complete game there tonight. That certainly gives a boost to the Rockets. Ball three. Yeah, you know, we talked about it a little bit uh, earlier in the game, and, and the key to their season, if they want to have a successful season, is pitching. If they can get enough pitching, they're going to have a, you know, a decent chance because... Ball four. They have a lot of decent to good hitters on their team, and I think they're going to be able to bunch hits together, get some runs. It's a matter of if they're going to be able to, the pitching can keep them in the games, you know, give up only three, four runs a game, I think. We mentioned Joe Miller, who certainly pitched well. I think he was the ace of the staff of West Albany. Crew Clark pitched well. 
And that, that does give them a couple of starters. Yeah. I don't know how deep they are in the pitching. And you, right. You have to be very deep to win a lot of games in the seventh. But they could do uh, damage in a tournament. They have not done it here. They lost their first three games. Have the lead tonight, 6-3, but a runner at first. With one out, here's Eric Long, the shortstop. He looks at a good, like a breaking ball for a strike. Nothing and one to Eric. He's looking for his first hit tonight. Flown out to center. Grounded to the first baseman and grounded out to the shortstop. Go to first, runner is back. Again, defensively tonight for the Rockets, Jackson Soto is the first baseman. Austin, Andrew Kettleson at second, Sawyer Reed at short. Jake Rapay is the third baseman. The outfielder, Jacob Buley in left. Jacob Caston in center. And Trent Webb, the right fielder. The pitcher, Crew Park, throws and it's fouled back and ahead quickly. Nothing and two to Eric Long. A lot of Jacobs for the Rockets today. On the left side of the field there, yeah. Jake Rapay at third, Jacob Buley in left and center, Jacob Caston. Nothing and two. Crew Clark with his side from Austin throws. Batter reaches out, taps it slowly to second. Could be trouble. It will not be fielded cleanly by the second baseman, Andrew Kettleson, and the runner from first will go to third. It'll be a, a base hit. It was hard to tell here with the, the, the netting behind home plate that he didn't have it in his glove. Andrew Kettleson came in and was slowly four. hit. Go. He wanted to grab Taylor. it and throw it at the same time, but he could not grab the ball, and it wound up on the ground, and he then overran it, and the runner goes to third. Would have been such a tough play had he made it. I think maybe what he was trying to do was just get in his glove and shovel it to first, but he could never get it. I would still call it a, a hit and oh, yeah. to it because of the runner going to third. The runner should have been on second, but that ball went, got past him. But it'll be a base hit for Eric Long. He scored a, a hit and error of the pitch. Misses ball one to Joe Schindler, who suddenly represents the uh, tying run at the plate. So runners at first and third with one out as Joe Schindler, the number three hitter in the order. Tough part of the order right now who has walked, singled, and grounded out. Pitches pop foul. It's going to be a long run and just out of room as reaches over the hedge. He went halfway into it. <laughs> That was Jackson Soto, the first baseman. Reached across the hedge trying to get it, but it was just a little too far. It's a thick hedge. It's, it's very, very wide. thick. Very wide hedge. You couldn't put your arm all the way across it. That was the problem. One ball, one strike. Joe Schindler, right-handed hitter. Runners lead from the corner. Hitter represents the tying run. Pitch is high for ball two. Austin Smith fakes a throw to first, but does not. Haven't seen that tonight. We often see when Luke Rappé is the catcher. He'll get that throw behind the runner at first. Mm -hmm. Likes to do that frequently. 2-1. The count. 6-3. The score. Rockets on top. Runner does not go from first, and this one is fouled away out there towards the football field. A team from Corvallis, and I, again, I don't remember the other team they said. It was not Eugene. I think it was Hillsboro, but two teams out there playing football tonight. I don't know who comprises those teams. Don't know. Whether they're a high school player in the summer. Just kind of thrown together out of the area. People that like to play football. Yeah, maybe. 2-2 two -two is this one is hit over the hedge and down there into right field. By the way, we've not mentioned, I have not mentioned the dimensions tonight here. It's 390 to straightaway center. 320 down the left field line and 330 feet to the right field line on what is really a very pleasant stadium with the lights on here in, in the dark. Really nice to watch a game here. 2-2 Two -two is outside, ball three. Dum -dum -dum -dum. <laughs> on deck is their cleanup hitter, Dalton Pachano. Hope he sacrifices. <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> Three balls and two strikes. 
Runners lead from the corner. Crew Clark laboring here in the seventh inning. Has a sign from Austin Smith. And throws 3-2 and it's swung on and hit into right field. It is a base hit. One run will score. The other runner will stop at second. Throw comes home. No need for that as the runner was going to score easily from third. And fortunately, the throw does not allow the runner at second, Eric Long, to advance any further. But David Bellamy scores the fourth run. It is 6-4. Eric Long stands at second. And at first base is Joe Schindler. The tie run now at first. And the cleanup hitter, Dalton Pachano, who has walked. Struck out at a time when he certainly should have been sacrificed. That's right. <laughs> and walked in the fifth. <laughs> a lot of time taken by Crew Clark, who throws high and inside ball one. And he really is having problems now. Uh, yes. In the first inning, didn't think he would last long. He walked three straight batters after getting two easy outs to start the game. All three batters would score. And here comes a little discussion on the mound. As Troy Babbitt will come out. It appears that this, this visit will just be a discussion. Talking things over with his infield. Does not appear ready to go to anyone in relief. Don't see anyone don't, down the line. I don't see anybody. It might be somebody who's already out there. Yeah, somebody off the field would come in and relief. But the question is, how much time left do we have here? We're about 12 minutes. One star new inning. All right. So this will be the last inning. Whatever this happens, this inning. So they would finish the inning. I think if the Rockets have the lead at 10, they should call it. <laughs> but there's a strike. One ball, one strike. It's Dalton Pachano, obviously dangerous. He is their cleanup hitter. He's built like a cleanup hitter. Don't want to mess with him in the park. Not to lose more hub care. <laughs> I don't have anything to surrender. <laughs> no, you don't. You'd be in trouble then. 1-1 one, one pitch. Hit on the ground. And shortstop Sawyer Reed will go to second. Steps on there for one. Throw to first. Throws it wide and pulls the first baseman Jackson Soto off the bag. Soto made a great grab to prevent the run from scoring. Number 11. But it's only the Sawyer. second out. Thompson. Maybe Sawyer should have taken a little more time. He really made that throw quickly after stepping on second. and It was bang, bang. The ball was in his glove. He stepped on second instantly. Mm -hmm. But he did not make a good throw to first because he was off balance. And you could see from the direction of his arm when he threw it that it was going away. Yeah, it all happened too fast for Sawyer. Uh, he's a great defender. We've said that all year. And he, he got it, no problem. He got to the bag much quicker than I think he anticipated, uh, especially with the runner running. So Pachano takes the place of Joe Schindler, who is out on the fielder's choice. Eric Long is at third. Pachano is at first. And Jordan Thompson is the hitter who takes strike one. But there are two outs. 6-4. Runner at first. That's Pachano now. Still represents the tie run. Jordan Thompson, who has walked, lined into a double play. And also lined back to pitcher. Pop-up. Could be playable. Hastening, hastening. Jackson Soto dives and cannot oh. make the catch in foul territory. That would have been a great play had he made it, though. Needed just a little more distance on that foul pop. Jackson made a heck of an effort, but could not come up with it. Runners at the corner, first and third. Six hits in the ball game for the challenges. Eight hits in the game for the Rockets. A reminder from Lynn Benton Community College, get started, get finished at LBCC. They have a bundle on tuition, housing, travel. And prepare for virtually any career you might choose at Lynn Benton Community College. Of course, the main campus in Albany, also in Lebanon, Sweet Home, and Corvallis. So where is our roster Grossman? I heard him introduced here as a... Number two, Jimmy. Oh, he's just a pinch runner. Yeah, pinch runner. 
So Jimmy Grossman in as a, as a runner, a pinch runner. Here's a pitch swung on, hit towards center field. Could be the final out of the game. Coming on and putting it away is Jacob Kasten. At first, I thought that ball was well hit. <laughs> but it actually was a little bit dangerous for Kasten, who had to move towards right field and also come in as a distance to make the catch. But he does so, and the game is over. And the Rockets have won their first game at the tournament. It is not a game that matters because they dropped their first three. So they still will be playing for the uh, the final position, the fourth place position tomorrow, but they have a chance to win it. Right, it, you know, it's, it's a good team, Eugene. Uh, they, they were, what, three and four and oh in the tournament? So it has to give you a little bit of momentum, I think. And then if you get a win tomorrow, take that into next week when they play. So you know, it could lead to some big things. They win it 6-4, and we'll be back to wrap things up here. We'll take our time out. Our first game of the year, 11th summer of American League Baseball, an interesting one. First inning looked like it was going to be one of those legion games, we call them. Yes. <laughs> one of those long nights. It was 3-3 three, three after one. It was 4-3 three after three. That went until the sixth inning. The Rockets fortunately came up with a couple of runs, and then a run for the challengers here in the seventh. Final score 6-4. Rockets have won it. We'll be back to finish up tonight on KGAL. Wouldn't it be great if you could take the comforts of home with you when you travel? Well, you can. At Lassen RV in Albany, we sell vacation homes on wheels. When you travel, you don't have to lug suitcases in and out and sleep in strange beds. Hit the road with your vacation home and visit some of our grand national parks, or even better yet, your grandchildren. Lassen RV, where friends send their friends. Just east of I-5 on Highway 20 in Albany and online at LassenRV.com. You will always get your money's worth and the food is fresh, original, and tasty at Extapa Family Mexican Restaurant in Lebanon. Open areas or cozy booths, you'll find Extapa's service superb and menu variety most excellent. Visit them for lunch or dinner where the parking is convenient and the atmosphere is sweet. Are you part of an office group? Groups of 10 to 25 are always invited and $3 drink specials are always offered. Enjoy Extapa Family Mexican Restaurant today at 25 North Main in Lebanon. 1580 KGAL. Welcome back. It wasn't the Where the Rockets have won the game 6-4 here as we start our 11th summer of American Legion Baseball. Hey, thank you very much. Appreciate everything thank you did you. for us tonight. Sure. The, the gentleman here was the public address announcer tonight. They really were very nice to us here tonight. Gave us a great assist and a nice nicely redone press box here it's far yeah. different from the old one. Oh yeah and uh, very nice very pleasant i thought i would have trouble three seeing through the double pane of glass here or through the double uh, screen we have a screen there is a window that opens which is nice the old press box did not have windows that open it was either warm in here or you could go outside which would be a little bit windy yeah but it was also rather loud because of the type of construction because the granite did you call it granite I guess I don't know what it was yeah Rock. <laughs> <laughs> were they rocks yeah. it was hard <laughs> but it was very hollow and a great deal of echo quality in the, the old press box it's really nice right now and the gentleman's public address announcer really very pleasant to us this evening but the Rockets have won the first game in our 11th summer of American Legion baseball again we cover about 20 games in the course of the summer and we divide them between the Mid Valley Rockets and also the T Girding Builders. The Builders were off to a very good start, seven and one as of Wednesday, but they did play games Thursday and Friday. But it, it will drive you bonkers. I went to the Gazette Times website, tried to find something on the most recent games, and could not. Now maybe it was in the paper, but it was not on their their website. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know how they did on their most two two recent games. But they were 7-1 and one, uh, to start the season. And they had included on their team a couple of players who were on the 5A um, All-Star game today at Goss Stadium. Luther Ellenson from Corvallis was in that game. But I, as I understand from Kip Carlson, my main man, my main information man, <laughs> yes. uh, who also is the public address announcer frequently up in Corvallis, he told me he did not think Luther was on the team, the American Legion team. But Luther was at the All-Star game today, as were two members of the team, Henry Rondo and Tanner Holland. Hmm. 
and they do have some very good players over there, and they're off to a very good start. The Rockets, we also carry about 10 games for the Rockets, 10 for T. Gerding, and the Rockets had dropped three in a row here at this tournament, the Grant Smith Woodbat Invitational. <laughs> the door is open. <laughs> Let me That's shut that. See if, shut. I, see if I can close it. <laughs> but the Rockets had dropped three straight games here and had fallen to, uh, let's see, they were four and six on the season, but they now moved to five and six with a good victory tonight over the Eugene Challengers, winning yeah. it six four. We do have to take some time out here, so we'll do it right here and come back and wrap things up tonight from North Eugene High School, where the Rockets have won six four. Mark Thomas Motors GMC Buick is downtown Albany's only full service car and truck dealer. And the Mark Thomas Motors Downtown Service Department has built a reputation for customer satisfaction. They definitely go the extra mile. With local area pickup and delivery, service for all makes and models. Dewey and the crew are at your service Monday through Saturday. Take your vehicle into Mark Thomas Motors Downtown Albany Service Department, 5th and Ellsworth, or Santi Am across from Fred Meyer in Albany. Albany Burgerville is celebrating over 50 years of serving customers fresh, great-tasting food with a mission to serve with love. Now featuring the Ham Havarti Sandwich, all-natural diamond ranch ham layered with melted Havarti cheese, fresh slice of tomato on a toasted hoagie roll, complemented with a seasoned tradition chocolate hazelnut milkshake. Pick up an Albany Burgerville rewards card now. Cash for every dollar spent. Albany Burgerville is celebrating over 50 years of serving customers fresh, great-tasting food with a mission to serve with love. Albany Burgerville. Fresh. Local. Sustainable. Painting is a simple pleasure when you get help from the friendly folks at Economy Supply Building Center. That's because Economy Supply is your neighborhood Ace Hardware and Contractor Center. So they know how to use and can help you select the right Ace Royal paint at a price you'll love. Colorful, high-quality Ace Royal paint start at the Everyday Economy Supply a low price of just $23.99 a gallon. Remember, Ace is the helpful place. And you'll find Economy Supply Building Center where Highway 34 becomes Tangent Street in Lebanon. Treat your family with fresh Mexican cuisine at La Roca Mexican Restaurant. Pancho's guacamole is already famous. Taco Tuesdays are popular where you can get them for just a dollar. For 21 and over, try the Monday margaritas and Taco Tuesday Coronas. Fresh and original, try La Roca today at the corner of Queen and Hill in front of Fitness Experience. Open every day from 11 to 9 except Fridays when they close at 9.30. Reservations accepted by calling 541-928-6141. La Roca. Serving the Mid-Valley for over 50 years. You're listening to News Talk 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis. Welcome back here to North Eugene High School. We'd love to see you with us uh, throughout the summer here, our 11th Summer American Legion Baseball. I mentioned, referred to this earlier, our first season that we covered the games, the uh, Richie's Market at the time, who later became T. Girding Builders. Richie's Market went to the World Series in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, it was an interesting, interesting place. Uh, we were able to touch on it briefly during our game. I said one day it was 113 they set on the field with the heat from, uh, it was something like, it was close to 100 degrees. They said it was about 113 on the field when Richie's Market played. And it was interesting to go into Bartlesville, Oklahoma, a very small area in Oklahoma. But in the afternoon, you would not see anyone. As we should mention that Ron Bellamy departs our our studio here. It is a pleasure to see you. And I don't know again how many of you are able to read the Register Guard, but if you didn't, it's a shame that you missed the work of Ron Bellamy over the years. It was really a good, he's gone now incidentally, it's not just building him up. He is an excellent, excellent writer. Yeah. And as I said in the course of the game, we missed him greatly when he left the Register Guard and went to a different position rather than their feature writer, although he did occasionally write pieces for the guard, but it's now retired. But in Barnesville, Oklahoma, in the afternoons, it was amazing. You would drive in and would not be a soul on the street because it was so hot and humid in Barnesville. No one would go out. They were all inside. And even late into the evening when it was still, you know, in the summertime with the sun going down still at, at that point somewhere after 8 o'clock, there were very few people out. And it almost was like a ghost town in the time that, that we spent there. We never really saw anybody from Bartlesville other than the people in the stadium. And one time we had the people who, they had a grill down there in their concession stand. We had the people from the grill come up, and the press box was air-conditioned, delightfully air-conditioned. 
And when the people who were working the grill on that afternoon, when it was 113 degrees on the field, came up, <laughs> I swear to you, they talked to us for the longest time because they didn't want to leave. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> and then they stood around for a little bit after the interview behind us there in the press box at, at Bartlesville. Bartlesville hosted again in, uh, I believe it was 2007, they had another shot at the World Series because way back in, in the 1930s, shortly after American Legion World Series began, they hosted the World Series. So they have a history of, of doing it at a very nice field mm. in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. That was our first summer. We're hoping one of these times, like the Beavers at uh, Omaha, Nebraska, to get back to a World Series. We'll see what happens in this summer. The Rockets have won tonight by a score of 6-4. to four. A game that started 3-3 on the first inning. We thought we were in for a long night, but yeah. both pitchers, Crew Clark of the Rockets and Trevin Demilio, go all the way, and Crew Clark gets the better of uh, his opposition and picks up the victory tonight. Our next game is Monday, and that will be from Willamette University, and that's the home of the Whitnell Dodgers. The that's, Dodgers. That's also a nice place to go. Oh, it is. It's a nice field. Yeah. Uh, it's a nice press box and a very nice place from which to view a game. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like to go up there. And we like to do the road games when we can. Some, it's impossible to go to the south, for example. Uh, T. Girding right now is down south with Klamath and Grants Pass. And we will have a game from Roseburg next week. Uh, I've got the time. <laughs> I'm sequestering. <Yeah. laughs> And, you know, i got to do as many games as I can. The thing, uh, the thing working out, you know, work, standing on the street corners with a little tin cup. Yeah. I've, I've got a little sign that says, I won't work, but I need money. <laughs> uh, maybe I've got to switch that philosophy. Yeah, you know? maybe. Uh, so we need to do as many games as we can. We have a game from Roseburg next week, but uh, whenever they go up to Withnell, T. Girding, or uh, in this case, the Rockets, we like to carry those games, and we will on Monday. I was just searching for the start time here. A reminder from Samaritan Health Services, your source for exceptional orthopedic care. Have any of those problems? Arthritic joints, carpal tunnel, bad shoulders, a blown out knee? The answer is Samaritan Health Services. Just suffering is not going to do it. And just, uh, you know, taking time off does not necessarily heal everything. See Samaritan Health Services. Their number is 1-800-299-2929. Samaritan Health Services in Corvallis. That's a 5 o'clock start on Monday. Thank you. Uh, yeah. You have to keep everything battened down here, and it's rather close quarters, and I know I have the schedule here somewhere. And uh, it does say Girding Builders at Withnell Dodgers, 5 p.m. start. And then on the 21st, which will be uh, next Friday, mm -hmm. will be the Mid-Valley Rockets at Roseburg against Dr. Stewart's. That will be a 4 p.m. start. And then we will get... The, uh, the girding, oh, I did say the, the Rockets. It'll be the Builders, the Builders at Withnell yeah. on, on Monday. I believe I said the Rockets. The Builders at Withnell on Monday, the Rockets at Roseburg on Friday at 4, and then on the 27th of the month, we will next see the girding Builders and the Rockets together in their first meeting of the year, 7 o'clock at Memorial Stadium in Albany. So that's uh, a few of the games ahead. Of course, we will once again broadcast games from the Star Spangled Tournament. We'll have a game each day starting on the 4th of July, which is a Thursday this year. 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th we'll have games from the tournament. It should be a, a nice summer. We would appreciate your company throughout. Thank you for joining us today, and thank you, Scott. Yeah, thank you, Ray. A quiet press box and a quiet stadium here. Four runs on, uh, well, let's start with the winners, the Rockets. Six yeah. runs on eight hits. There was an error, despite the fact it's not up there on the board. We differed a little bit with the gentleman keeping score at the end. Yeah. In fact, we would give the Rockets nine hits. Yes. Jackson Soto should have been credited with a hit. They gave him E4. Didn't want to disagree with him here in the press box where you could hear and say, Oh, I, I did. That's, that's okay. Wrong. I know you did. <laughs> I'm young. And they're waiting for you in the park. Spot. Yeah. Well. Me, they're going to let me go. Because I said, all right. <laughs> but uh, actually, six runs, nine hits. Soto should have been credited with a hit. Yeah, hit and then an error, too. And uh, there is one error yeah. for the, uh, the Rockets. Four runs on six hits and two errors for uh, the uh, challengers tonight. You may read that a little bit different than in the paper tomorrow, but trust us. That's the way it is. The key yep. thing, Rockets get the win 6-4. Thank you, Chris Adams, back at the, uh, the station. We appreciate the way you run the game always. And we'll see you next Monday at the 5 o'clock.
from Willamette University as T. Girding takes on the Wisnell Dodgers. One more time. Really nice game to start the season. Should be fun. Final score, Rockets get their first win of this tournament. They win it 6-4 on KGL. Thanks for listening to today's broadcast of American Legion Baseball on 1580 KGAL. Legion Baseball has been brought to you by Lynn Benton Tractor, La Roca Mexican Restaurant, Albany Grocery Outlet, McDonald's, Lassen RV, Extapa Family Mexican Restaurant, Mark Thomas Motors, Burgerville, Now Builders, Albany's Figaro's Pizza, and by Economy Supply Building Center. This broadcast is exclusive property of Eads Broadcasting, 1580 KGAL and Radio Ryan Productions. U.S. copyright law protects this broadcast. Duplication or rebroadcast of any portion of this program is strictly prohibited without prior written consent. We now join our regular programming. and operated, this is the very independent News Talk 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis. It's seven. Locally owned and operated, this is the very... Serving the Mid-Valley for over 50 years. You're listening to News Talk 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis. Not if it happens overnight, Eric and...